Everybody, hello, hello, hello. How is everyone? How are you guys doing? Well, some of the hosts, it's not gonna be just about real estate. I am, I have taken on a different platform. Hello, Lynette, thank you for coming on. I just want you guys to know that I am live on Facebook and Instagram at the same time. Um, this will not be about real estate, though you guys know I am a realtor. But this will be about... Today we have a specific title, specific um, topic that we are going to be talking about. As you guys know, we've talked about... Um, last week I did the introduction of the of the platform of what we'll be discussing. However, today we are going to be focusing on the very first topic, which will be about sexual abuse. Whether you've been abused by somebody you know, or whether you've been abused by somebody you didn't know. Um, sometimes, majority of us that get abused. I mean, I've watched a lot of movies. I don't know if you guys have watched Women That Are Loose. Um, like, for example, we could even talk about husbands raping their 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 wives you know those are things that um we do not want to see and there's a lot of things that's happening and what people tend to do they tend to sweep them under the rug they don't want to discuss and talk about them so the purpose for these lives pretty much is for that reason i am doing these lives simply because i want to make sure that we all have a voice and we all um, understand that it's not okay to to hide what you've been through because what you've been through as a child affect how your future is affect how you go on in life what you do in your life you know your relationship how you raise your kids um, a lot of the stuff so the platform is purposely to first Today, again, the topic is not going to be a variable of topics. Um, if there's any additional topics that you guys would like me to address, I will gladly do that on other um, seasons and other specials. Because we do have, I have different topics, you know. Um, I have today, like I said, it's going to be dedicated specifically to sexual abuse. Um, and when I said sexual abuse, um, I want to, again, you know, talk about you who's been raped by a friend of the family. This majority of people get raped when they was kids. Um, you guys that been raped while, you know, by a family member. You guys been raped by some uncle. You guys have been raped by some sibling because that happens, believe it or not. Um, you guys have been raped by your own father. Again, that happened also. You know, it's sickening. I watched a show where this young lady literally um her, her mother apparently died so you know it was the guy had one daughter and when they when the wife died as the little girl start growing the men start seeing oh she looks like her mother she looks like her mother oh she reminds him so much of his of his wife what this man did was horrific he basically chose to take this girl as his wife not even a wife. He started raping her one day. He started complimenting her. How she looked so good. How she looked this, she looked that. And turned around and started sleeping with the girl. She started sleeping with her. Meanwhile, there's this dude that's really interested in her. She cannot tell the guy anything. Every time the guy is begging her to get with him, she cannot answer his question simply because she's like, I cannot. And one day she decided, she said, you know what? She wanted to try to tell him. She said, I can't date you for X, Y, Z reason. And she ran off. She didn't tell him the whole reason. Come to find out she was pregnant. Now, mind you, this is a young girl of about the age 12 years old, 12 to 13. Her father took her innocence. 
And then not only did he take her innocence, she became pregnant by that a-hole. Okay? She became pregnant by that asshole. And then on top of everything, he want he he dared her not to go nowhere. She had to cook, clean, do everything after him. So one day she decided to write a letter to the young man that's been trying to talk to her. I, I'm not going to say she's about 12, 13. I want to say she was about 15, 16 years old at that age. Because now that I think about it, because, you know, um, she was of age where she could date somebody if she wanted to. She was about 15, 16 years old. And then um, what happened is that she wrote the letter to the guy and told the guy, um, this is the reason why I cannot be with you. My father has been raping me. And not only that, I am pregnant by my father. But her plan was she was going to poison the father that night. She cooked and put some poison in his juice. And she basically also poisoned herself. That's the unfortunate thing. Not only did she poison herself, she poisoned him also. And basically they both died. They both died. And she killed herself because she felt ashamed. Not only was he raping her, taking advantage of her, he basically also, now she had to carry a child that was going to be her sibling plus her child. She couldn't live with that. So, you know, this is just a show that I watch. However, we've also seen, you know, there's reality to these things also to where um, fathers are really raping their kids in real life. And majority of these shows sometimes are based of a show of a reality, somebody's reality. Sometimes they've heard a reality from somebody, they take it and they write a show about it. Sometimes they've seen an example. So, um, guys, as you guys know, I am Haitian. I will be speak, I will be flipping in both languages with the with the live, um, just to let you guys know. So I've just probably done an introduction in English. I want to go ahead and do an introduction in Creole. That way, everybody, if you have a problem understanding what I'm saying, you're welcome to ask me. I do not mind translating because the idea is to alternate between the both languages. So my better do step one, my was Gachet, my Florida realtor, my real estate in Florida. Justement, moi te fait une semaine passer nous te faire une introduction côté que nous t'a parlé de différents topics que moi t'a aimé parler sur plateforme ça. Um, je dis on a parlé simplement sur abus sexuellement. Sur côté que um ou ka jwenn ou même ou te ka abusé par un monde, une famille ou te ka abusé par un monde, un ami ou ka konn un monde quand même qui t'a abusé. Parfois c'est papa yo. Parfois c'est tonton yo, parfois c'est cousin yo, parfois son friend of the family, parfois c'est même mon l'église là tout qui qu'on a pas abusé nous. Sont d'ailleurs même ouvert plateforme dans côté que um nous opening you know nous parler, nous faire des discussions because ça qui passe when you was a, a child, ça ça qui te passe au um l'autre petit l'autre petit, li affecté au l'en grandeur. Li affecté relation avec nèg ou al prend en um, li affecte relation l'en petit ou j'en levé petit tout so en pile da en pile bagage sa yo affecte nou um twin twin who is twin you said it's me from 12:40 what does okay maybe a little bit more detail please i'm sorry yeah so li affecte j'en nou bagage j'en nou grandi j'en nou fait de série bagage dans la vie nou et those things never stop honestly son bagage ki pa jam sorti lan ou même Let's go connect que you mon te prend innocence. So, on ti histoire mwen te gade yon lè. Ti histoire c'est que um yon ti dam, euh um, papa li te gen li, sel li même avec maman. Et puis maman vin mouri. Papa mwen, le maman vin mouri. Papa di kon sa, pendant ti fi a grandi, la gade petite la, li di oh, toujours fè m'son chanje maman, toujours fè m'chanje maman, la ti fi a fè manje, li di oh, etan kou se madame mwen. Oh, toujours fait me changer madame, moi toujours fait me changer maman. Mais papa, c'est pas pour moi, il m'a plat pour. Le petit fait avait commencé à développer, il a fait tété, bagaille ça yo. Nègla pas ouais qui est ce monde pour le prendre comme madame. Il prend petit petit là, il viole petit petit là. Il prend innocence petit là. Côté que son l'autre garçon t'a supposé dévoiler petit ça. Il prend innocence lui. Là il prend innocence petit là, mais quand tu le m'a appelé de parler avec cette dame là. Tu le m'a appelé de parler avec pour dire il pas qu'à répondre monsieur. Parce que chaque l'el baga li oblige kouri, la kay li la kriye. Et puis, li vin arrive tombe enceinte pour monsieur, pour gamon nan. L'el di papa a konsa ke li enceinte, papa content. 
papa content pour le faire petit pour lui mais lui même lui pas tête lui qui ca font petit pour papa lui écrit une aigle en lettre un jour pour déclarer une aigle pour qui ça que lui pas ca remet avec elle est-ce qu'elle dit lui pas ca remet avec lui pour qui ça et puis lui expliquer mais c'est ça et joue à tout lui planifier que lui praler lui pral mettre poison là on manger sur nos longis pour papa pour tout dire les monsieur lui ça monsieur couri monsieur couri mal chance pour pour moi même et mal chance pour monsieur bon chance pour mademoiselle dans sens mais celle et où elle fait le tire tête lui tout parce que yon malandrin comme ça yon cochon comme ça qui ca prend petite li comme pour le faire servir comme fi li mérite mourir ça c'est moi même c'est l'embrancé ça c'est opinion pas si on ne ca prend dévoiler petite li pour le coucher petite li moun ça pas mérite mou pas mérite vivre ou pas mérite en la vie ou son moun ta supposé crocher et son ta supposé mettre en prison excusez-moi des expressions pour tout monsieur en prison ta violo but then again you might enjoy liking it too they might enjoy liking it so yeah so li ta arrivé ti monsieur li même tout li te tuer tête li parce que li pas ka wè li même ki ta pral fon petit pour yon nèg comme ça qui c'est pas pal li et puis kounya pou le fon petit pou petit là non seulement petit là c'est ka frère ou seul pas ces petites pales encore on prend solité de um, ni te de suite ni la vie li ni la vie en um, petite là ni la vie papa déj ni la vie papa on ouais, la vie petite là tout parce que il sorti pas faire petite là so comme on te dit nous comme ça la like cassette to you guys the platform is going to be an open platform that if you would like to join you are welcome to come in um maybe it's not your story maybe it's somebody that you know that is suffering with knowing that they had been taken advantage with of when they were younger. I would like to get some feedback from you guys. If you do not want to tell your story, but I'm sure every one of us has heard or known somebody that has been hurt, that has been violated one way or another, that is probably suffering. Um, a lot of us, especially in the Haitian community, especially in the society Haitian, nous gien de série bagay n'a enduré en dans nous côté que nous pas jamais vraiment comme si qu'on est qu'on est côté au sorti parce que au monde gien wa wè wa passer une situation ou wa passer yon yon événement dans la vie ou but no one seem to understand where it comes from being rape it's not a joke being taken advantage of against your will is not a joke. Being taken advantage of as a child on top of that. Not only did they violate you, they also took advantage of you as a child. That eats you up in your life. That is something that you can never take outside of your system. You can never forget that. How does it affect you um when that happened? So on parler comment l'affecte tout laisse ça passer laisse ça passer ou toujours pas you are scared even when you find somebody that is trying to be with you it stops you from reacting it really 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 hurt in a lot of aspects that we may not that many of us or others may not understand it may react differently to be honest with you as well it may be different reaction based on that so to give you an example you always on guard and you even though you have friends and you know a lot of time too that tends to let you become like a little tomboy i was a tomboy um i was a tomboy for a long period of time i would have rather deal with a dude hang like a dude whatever where i think for a long period of time i remember there's a very close friend of mine he's like a brother i mean you might as well say that's like my little brother i remember when i had my first child he was like oh was that is it rose rose had a baby um you know i thought rose was gay i thought she was a lesbian 
And he's like, I got to go see for myself. He came to Georgia at the time I was in Georgia just to see. I'm like, what are you talking about? I was just a tomboy. A lot of us sometimes, because, you know, we hide behind that because we don't make it easy for nobody to approach us because we don't want somebody. We, we feel like sometimes it's, even though you might be willingly giving yourself to somebody, but you feel that it's not enough. You, you don't feel the way you would like to because honestly, somebody took advantage of you. So you don't really know how to, how to react. Even in your marriage, it could affect you. So sexual abuse is is something that a lot of people don't seem to understand how severe it is, how serious sexual abuse is. So how many of you guys know somebody that's been raped in our community itself or in your surrounding, but their rapist has never seen judgment? Has Pajam Jijé or Pajam Jijé how many of you guys know somebody that's in the church right now, currently, there's a deacon, a deaconess, or somebody that their parents trust them to pick up their kids to go to church. This man is so sick that he's taking advantage of these little girls that nobody's saying anything about it. Many of us does. I per I personally don't know somebody going through it currently, but I've heard of many stories of many others. And we seem to be afraid, it seems, for us to help and pick up the phone and help somebody that's in need. Sometimes these people are calling out for, for help. They are crying. They are asking for somebody to help them. But we are all afraid because we feel like it's not our place um, to blow the whistle. Because you don't want to look stupid. Majority of the time, they are going to deny it. Majority of the time, they're being denied that they are being abused because they were told not to say nothing. Sometimes they're told not to say nothing by their own parents because their parents are afraid of what society is going to say about it. Sometimes I feel like they are afraid to put themselves out there because somebody makes them feel like it's their fault. Someone make them feel responsible for them being abused. How many of you guys know, how many of you guys been to the situation where your stepfather raped you? Your stepfather took advantage of you and your mother was aware of it and allow it. In our own community, we've heard many stories where young girls have got killed, chopped up by their step-parents because their step-parents raped them. And now if they find to be pregnant or if the if they threaten to go tell, they've been killed. Many of you guys knows this. Many of you guys has been, um, give me one minute. Many of you guys, um, you know, have heard or known somebody that has hurt somebody in this aspect. You know how many of you guys are struggling in your marriages today? because somebody took advantage of you. There's many women like me. I thank God, you know, that I was able to share that with my husband one day, you know, it was years later I shared it with him. He didn't use it as a weapon against me. But you know what's sad? Is the lack of education that these commons these adults have when you've been violated. The lack of education, the way they talk to you, 
they make it seem like, no, I mean, it's truly your fault. Like this is what you wanted and that's why it happened. They make you feel like you did something wrong. They don't go after your rapist. They don't go after your attacker. They make you feel like you did something wrong. You, you, you know, I mean, the sickest part of all is knowing that your own daughter is being hurt by their own father sexually. But they're not saying anything about it. There's a lot going on in our communities, guys. And we have to be the voice and we have to be here at once to talk about them. To make sure that it doesn't happen to our daughters. Make sure that it doesn't happen to our younger siblings. Be careful who you live your who you let your child go with. You see me, I don't believe in a sleepover crap. I'm not doing no sleepover with nobody with my daughters. Unless I know you a hundred, a hundred percent, I'm not doing that. That sleepover crap a lot of time. This, this, these people, you know, they sick. You don't know how sick they are. So they take the, the advantage of abusing your kids. You got to be careful. And nowadays it's not just daughters only. It's not just daughters only. You have um, men also raping little boys. Um... Yeah, and that's what they, they make you feel like that. And they hide it. And especially if it's somebody that they know, like that's their friend, that's somebody in the church, they make you feel like you were the one that did that. And it damages you and it sabotages you. Because if you're not strong, you're not going to, huh, mommy? You're not going to make it out there if you're not strong. Because rape takes a lot from you. Rapes take something from you. And when you don't have a support that's going to be there for you, that's going to talk you and let you know that you did not do something wrong, that bastard, that a-hole, that low life is the person that is sick. It does a lot to you. And Ukonwe, sometime, one thing I can say, there's a lot of women, you, you made a point that I have to say, there's a lot of women that's out there sleeping left to right with different men, it's because they were taken advantage of and yet nobody ever taught them their value. So as a result, because they were um, abused and taken advantage of, please share the life for me, people, share the life for me. Um, because they were taken advantage of, they don't know their value. Once a woman being devailed by an unwanted man your self-esteem goes down the drain because amongst many other things, you feel like you're sick. Like you just feel like I was a child when mine happened. So I honestly don't remember knowing a lot. And let me tell you guys, that is the reason today I have daughters. I will not allow no man to cross leg my daughters. No, you will not. I don't care how old she is. You will not cross leg her. You will not do that because when you're not looking, people do sick, stupid shit to your child. So you have to make sure you always have your guard up. I don't trust no freaking body. I don't give a fuck who you are. I don't give a damn who you are. Excuse my language, but you will not cross my daughter's leg around your hips. No, sir, you will not. If my daughter is going to sit on you, like, for example, I, I mean, you somebody close, they're going to sit, they're going to sit on your legs right here. But they will not sit behind you, back to you, and they will not be cross-facing you. So these are things we have to be careful of because sick people do stuff. And you know, honestly, I think I know why a lot of little girls got hurt so much back home too. Because when they're back home, you're not wearing um, majority of uh, um, these gummons. You can't wear no pants. So they got you in a little dress, they got you in a little skirt, and then you around, and then these men, they sick already, and they like they prey on you. And some, and, and you know the sad, the sad thing is sometimes it's not just one person. I was reading um, Cassandra's book. I was reading her book, um, pretty interesting book. Um, you know she, 
She came to America when she was um she was 16, I believe. Um, you know, she yeah. Um 2022, 2002 when she came. We she left Haiti. Not only was she molested in Haiti, but she was also molested in the United States. She was also molested by in the United States and she was also abused. So which is um I believe my next week's um topic is going to be talking about the abuse, you know. That's what that one is going to be about. But she was um she I mean from what she she came she basically thought you know the drama, everything that she's been through was going to be ended when she left Haiti. But it continued. She she met I guess her nightmare just continued because I think for many of us that was hurt when we were back home. Automatically, you come here. Automatically, you come here. get up you think that the problem is finished for you. It's a lie, you understand? Because you think that the life is miserable, 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 you think that the life is L'elle te fait venir aux États-Unis pendant que elle t'a um, avantage t'a prend sur l'état violé et même j'en tout um, the other book which we'll talk about the other book um, also talked about when um, she came from Jamaica um, at the age of 15 somebody took advantage of her Miss Jones um, somebody took advantage of her at the age of 15 and and violated her and what that then she also mentioned that was one of the main reasons that she joined the military was so she could defend herself and be able to stand for herself. She joined the military for that reason. Um, that, I mean, again, that was one of the reasons that she joined the military. So, no cash share live la pour moi, s'il vous plaît, share live la pour moi. Moi, Facebook, vraiment pas gagne mon nom, je dis. Facebook, vraiment pas gagne mon nom, je ne sais pas, c'est Facebook. But justement, en pile nous qui vivons dans la communauté, en pile nous qui existait aujourd'hui, c'est une victime de sexual abuse. C'est une victime de sexual abuse. Et une victime de sexual abuse qui n'a pas vraiment come out and open parce que vous n'avez pas une voix pour parler, pour dire, OK, qui ça qui est passé dans la vie? qui te fait ça arriver moi même comment tout mon ca épargner pour me sûr que ça va répéter pour petit moi Hi mommy pas me dit non m'a regardé une vidéo recently une vidéo côté un petit mon un petit bébé on pas changer on pas même quoi tu peux là de même gain tu peux là de même gain 5 ans on me se 27 ans on pas même quoi tu peux là de gain 1 an ça c'est un 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 cicatrice pour la vie moi même qui pas tant duré comme ça un petit bébé monsieur a rape i think the guy was 25 year old and he raped that little baby ripped that baby come on mes amis nous que on est sans non seulement those sick people majorité des fois il y a fait avec propre famille il y a pas abusé propre famille But ou même qui gon petite fille qui remet petit ou qui gen sort qui remet fort comment faire comfortable pour violer petit ou l'autre monde pour prendre avantage de yon monde how do you feel about that how do you how are you okay with raping some taking some a little baby's innocence how are you okay with raping somebody how would you feel if they did it to you how would you feel if they did it to your sister How would you do feel if they did it to your child? I bet if somebody violated your child, you would be ready to just go out there and kill them. I bet you would be ready to go out there and basically demolish them. Um, I guarantee you would be able to. You would not be okay with that. So then why do you think it's okay to, it's okay to, to take somebody else's innocence? Or let's say it's, it's not, well, no matter. I, th I think they will fail regardless. If you do it without the person's permission, you're still taking something from them. 
because you devour you 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 devailing them without their permission. That's def that's still the same to me. I feel. So why do you feel it's okay to to touch somebody unwanted without permission? Would you be okay if it happened to your sister? Would you be okay if it happened to you? Because you know, yes, men get abused too. Men get abused. Men get um um abused also. No problem. Men get abused also, but we find it more in women. Now, most men that get abused a lot of the time, and here's what I'm going to tell you guys. Do whatever you guys could do to keep you guys' as children out of foster care. Out of those, you know, those... Don't be afraid to educate your kids. Don't be afraid to discipline your kids. Because when the system takes them, that's another aspect of how you will be one of those victims because some of these kids you have to talk to them because they seem to think if they go out there they're gonna have a better life but all the system does is put them in a pile for them to become victim of raping or for them to be in, in, in what they say in, in jail and once they go in jail what happened again so rape is not it's, it's not something that's that should be done. Taking Raping someone is basically... I, I mean, I don't know. Can you ever heal from that? Shout out. Happy birthday, Rebecca. Happy birthday. And shout out to Attorney Lana Joseph. Um, Attorney Joseph, I would love for you to join me on this live. It would be a pleasure for me. I have a question for you. Um, I don't know if you deal with the um, family cases also, but it would be a beautiful, I mean, something that would please my heart if you would be able to join me. I am on TikTok, so I don't know if you could do it on, on whatchamacallit. Um, but yeah, I don't think you can ever really heal from being raped because that lives with you forever. And that makes you overprotective at times because unfortunately, it's not something you can get you can forget you cannot forget that so because of that i'm very very overproductive of my daughter um i am very protective of my children not even just my daughters i'm very very productive um protective of my boys i don't believe like i said in that sleepover crap because i've seen kids get hurt many other ways but i know there's sick people out there that also take advantage of that I do have a friend of mine that I can tell you guys a story this is something that happened with a previous co-worker of mine um you oh okay you are coming from Indiana how uh, hopefully everything went well on that hi James how are you um so she has children she was a single mother and she basically used to allow one of her sons to go over his father's house while the little boy was there i think he was a friend of the father's brother so it's like he was over his dad's house and his dad has um i think a little brother that has friends that come over and they unfortunately raped that little boy they raped that little boy so you have to be careful too because not only you don't let your kids sleep over at just anybody houses too but if you are co-parenting and you have a child that's going over their their mom house or their dad's house be careful who's going to be there because sometimes c'est pas dans ce monde là que papa yo là que maman yo they get hurt sometimes it don't even have to be the stepfather sometimes it could be a friend especially mon cunyan like now we watching these little girls you develop it tellement by the time i remember being 12 years old i was a little kid i don't remember being with a shape of bada bang bada bang like that now you looking at these little girls you could see you get to get tete you get to tellement développé um, they already, you know, grow, look growing in certain ways. 
that some sick men will find these little girls attractive and take advantage of them. So you have to be seriously, seriously careful about who's in the surrounding of your kids. Me, I am very alert. I do not ever want to have my daughter come home or for me to come home and I don't want that. From that attend petite I will go to prison. I will go to jail. I will be locked up. That is something I can tell you guys that. Raison ça yo ka fait mal lan lan prison, sou mon ta man yo nan petite mo yo lan lan l'autre lan façon. Sou malandre ou cochon, un sick person that think it's okay for you to touch my daughters or even my sons. I mean, I thank God my son, my 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 youngest son is 18. He'll be 19 this year. Um, you know, I thank God, you know, they are. But when it comes to my daughters, if somebody touched them, I will I'll go to prison. Yes, no sleepover, period. I don't do sleepovers. I don't want, I mean, I've seen things where I think there was a story, there was many stories where the little girl, she went to sleep over by her friend's house and they got an argument. One of them boiled water, hot water poured on the little girl. There's many things that can happen to your kids doing sleepovers. But one of my biggest one is not knowing who's, how, how these people are. And then get that piece of go sleep over somebody's house. And then Ben, my daughter was violated. And sometimes you got to understand, these kids are going to be scared to tell you. I want my daughter to be voiced, and I told them, I check on them, I talk to them, because you want to make sure that your kids understand that if something happened to them, they need to be comfortable to come tell you that somebody touched them inappropriately. So I remember um, this, my daughter, my daughter, she is her mother's daughter, I'm not going to lie to y'all, because she don't play that. Um, she was coming from school, up the bus, and thank God, one thing I always do if my daughter have... Um, skirts on, I always make sure they have shorts under and everything. And I think this little boy kept bothering her and had the nerve to pull down her pants. She turned around, she slapped, she slapped him. When she got home, she said, mommy, this is what happened, this is what happened. I made a report, I filed a report, but she basically turned around and slapped him and let him know that it was not okay to do. I will not tolerate that. I'm, I'm going to fight to the battle, to the end, if I have to, to make sure that my kids are protected at all cases. So for those of you guys that are single women, be careful what kind of men you take in, in your home. Because sometimes, especially if you have daughters, be careful. And that's why I said it's important that if you have, if a man, as a man, if you have daughters, I know sometimes the situation is hard. You may not be able to Stick it out, but if you can work it out, try to stick it out, work it out with that woman that don't give birth to your daughter, that would be the best advice I can give you. I think it's important for you not to walk away from a home, especially if there's daughters involved. But only you know what you can handle. Only she knows what she can handle. It's definitely important to do that. Because once you once you allow another man to come into that home, that man should never see that little girl as a woman that they can put their hands on. They should see that little girl as that could be their daughter. But then again, you have sick people out there that would even rape their own child. That will devail their own child. So therefore, you think they're going to care about yours? They're not going to care about your daughter because they would do that to their own. They sick. Remember, what goes around comes around. But at the same time, too, sometimes, So if you have daughters, do your best to protect those little girls. They are innocent. They cannot protect themselves. They need you. And do not ever let these kids feel like if somebody touched them inappropriately, that it's their fault. You need to... I don't care. And I'm going to say... I don't care. I'm going to go, um, um, excuse my language, because sometimes these women forget this is their child. They pick the dick over that. You oublie que si moun nan se petit yo. You oublie sa. And you pense que it's okay pour you. Didn't, would you like to join me? 
Del Didin, would you like to join me if that's possible? Because I know we know people in our community that has done some sick stuff. We um we know people in our community that you you know that they never believe. You toujours dire tel pas fait tel bagay. When you are in a relationship with a man, you need to be careful who you bring around your child. Ma dil ma predil encore. In four cards distingue, c'est petit tout, petit tout a toujours été petit tout. You know the ones qui qui prend nèg là over petit là, malgré tout mon n'a souffri. These kids are suffering because they cannot feel comfortable because they told you the first time you make it feel like it's their fault. You make it feel like it's their fault, so therefore they cannot come to you because it keeps happening until Timur Nase, the child get pregnant, or the child sometimes even kill themselves, or the child and the, and the child, the man is so freaking. I I don't know the word to like sick is not even warranted on explaining and talking about these type of people because I think sick is just too much of a nice word. They kill the the child. They kill the child. Nous connais plus ya montande côté nèg la i i ti ti petit la li mete li lan ba machine ni ça va happen right here in Orlando. Gen moun ki konnen moun yo personnellement. I remember seeing, and this is another problem, guys. Quit always quick to say so and so didn't do something. I remember seeing something last year. I didn't know this guy, but I know that you know he's. A lot of people know him. When Wekote, you know, they said that he possibly raped his twelve-year-old stepdaughter or something like that, and nobody was speaking on it. But I'm seeing a lot of people saying, "Oh, he didn't do it. He didn't do this. He didn't do that." How do you know? Speak for yourself. La fille me pas qu'on l'avait sans dire fait. And then when he got out, people were like, oh, Bim, I know he didn't do it. First of all, when you go to jail, you can come out on bail. Sometimes the person just come out on bail. Oh, he didn't do it. He didn't do it. I'm not saying he did. I don't know the dude. I'm just telling you that we are so quick to sweep the shit under the rug. Pour nous get on dit un tel pas de fait or you can shut your mouth and let the investigation go on. Ou même tout. It's important because the message of Oka gave you to Would you trust that person around your daughter? Would you be okay with that? Imagine now, moi même avoir nos amis, qu'on y a là, ou à marcher, ou à violer petit moun, qu'on y a là, ou pense que it's going to be okay for you to come around my child? You got another thing coming. What's worse is that people who used to have village to be counted were the ones doing. Yes, because the people that's supposed to be there watching you, supporting you, are the people that's doing that to you. And that's the biggest issue. The biggest issue is that we trust these people in our environment. We trust these people with our kids. Because, ou pense, oh, c'est ton ton timon nan. Li kaga del pou mwen. Oh, that's oh, that's my daughter's stepdad. You know, I can no. Don't do that. You need to know how to follow your instinct. And your woman's, your mother intuition lets you know that your baby's being hurt. But sometimes we look at the diggling better than we look at anything else. The diggling is not more important. Um, is not more important than your child. Like Women That Are Loose, that was a great movie. The At the end, the mother finally saw that she was stupid because majority sometimes, this man ain't even worth a damn. You're choosing them over your child. Jojo said, some Haitian, some mommy, wait a minute. Hi, Julie. Um, some mommy Haitian gives up the, for um for kid, give up for kids now. Nah, left daughter sleeping in the house all night with, yeah. Um, sometimes they do, and and but you know what? You be amazed. Sometimes the mom will be in the house. They'll be in the house. Hi, Hi, Joe. 
um joel write me please because i know you sent me something haven't had a chance to really go over it i just need to go um send me a text please so you could be the next person message i check because i know you sent me something um yeah so sometimes the woman the mom is in the house she just choose to ignore all the signs that's going on because the child is afraid to talk to, to, to them. Because the child is afraid to say, Mom, your boyfriend is violating me. Because you already let the child know you're not, gonna, you're not going to believe them. So you give this person, automatically you, you make the child afraid of you. So now this child is being molested over and over. Your dude, he's, bon he's, he's boning you willingly. And meanwhile, he's abusing your child. At what point do we put a stop to that? At what point do we open that up in the community and stop letting somebody, these kids, the next generation, sometime? Nobody can say it's Simon Nalaya. You tell my heart, don't go up, got it, Simon. They're young kids. They're young kids, but they look like they're fully developed. And they're so. How, like, come see, like, I don't, I, I don't know how to put it. Like, sometimes what's in the show, like, you see these kids, like, they hot and booty, like, they're all over the place. It's not their fault that they like that. Sometimes it's their parents that has allowed them to be abused and abused when they were younger. So by the time they're 15, 16, 20, 20 years old, they don't know no better. They think it's okay. Because their parents made them felt like it was their fault when they were hurt. Have you guys ever sat down and asked a young lady what is going through them deeply? Have you guys ever took the time out to get to know one of these young ladies that's around you that is going through something that is, you know, you, you, you're thinking to yourself, what's going on in their mind? Like, what are they thinking? But sometimes, these are what they resolve to, to bury the hurt. Sometimes, because of what they've been through, they go and they sleep around with, with men, and majority of them, they do it with older men. Sometimes they do it for money. Sometimes they just want to get something from that man, from these men. But have we ever tried to understand what they've been through? Is there somebody that they feel like they can trust to discuss what they've been through? Especially when mom is not listening to them. And majority of these girls, they don't have a father figure in their life. You need to embrace your daughters. You need to let them know that you love them. And if anything happens to them, that you're going to stand by them. I've known many women that chose the men. And that make it seem like the daughter's doing something to themselves. I know many women, for example, that cannot get pregnant or cannot have a child because they were pregnant for their own father and their fathers took them to go have um, um, an abortion. It is f freaking sick. It's sickening me to my stomach when I think about it. Because remember, that could have been maybe that one child you were going to have. And that child was not supposed to be your father's seed. Then you get pregnant. The coward, the bastard, takes you to have an abortion. Get rid of that baby. He goes that one opportunity you ever had in your life. That's why I don't believe I don't believe I don't believe I don't believe in abortion. The reason I don't believe in abortion is because I had a cousin of mine that told me a story and I saw something happen to a good friend of mine when I was in high school also. My cousin told me, she. I remember when I was pregnant with Daryl um, and then, you know, I was talking to her. She said, Maggie Pasham, don't let nobody tell, tell you to have no abortion. She said because when she got pregnant, she was pregnant at a young age. Um, her father made her have an abortion, but no, and this was not a rape case. This was just, you know, this is me just elaborating why I don't believe in abortion. I never believed in it, but I think these things gave me more strength not to ever consider that in my life. And she said, you know, I regretted it. 
for years I regret it. When I see other people's kids, I imagine how how old my child would have been today. Um, if you were raped, I do not condone you for getting rid of that child because that's a memory I would not want. I'm not going to lie to you. I don't think I could leave knowing that I'm watching a child that was a product of a, of a rape. I don't know in my heart would I be able to love this child. I mean, I think we should all be able to love our seed because that child comes from within you. But when you think about the situation, how you got that child, it could be something that can really be hurt for you to deal with for the rest of your life. So to which is on, I honestly, that would be a case I would have an abortion. But she reminded, she, she told me it reminded her every year. And every time she sees a child, she will she's imagine her child would have been this age. And she don't know what her baby would have been. She regretted having that abortion. And then um, I have a friend of mine when, when I was in high school. She Her mother made her get an abortion when she was eight months, about seven months old, pregnant. Honestly, that was definitely criminal activity that wanted um, the mother to be um, to be arrested if, you know. But, you know, we were kids. She was pregnant, and then her mother got her to have an abortion. She, to this day, never had a baby. Um, she was a year older than me. She never had a child. But what she did tell me when I used to be around her back after high school, we used to talk. She told me every year around the time that she had that abortion, she would feel the, the um, she, she would have some kind of sensation some time of pain because of that child, of that abortion. So that, but imagine that one opportunity that God was going to give you was taken by your father. You, you got pregnant for your dad because he was molesting you, using you. And then now you are pregnant for him and he took you to have an abortion. Now, no matter what other men you with, you cannot be with that man fully because you're not able to give that man a child. What type of life? What have you done to your child? What's her mentality? What's her brain like? And we wonder why um, a lot of them go through what they go through. What are they going through? What is she feeling? What are they feeling? How do you as a father feel knowing that you violated your child and you fucked up? messed up their future in the process. In the process of you doing that, you messed them up the opportunity to be able to have a happy life to, with a child and a, and a husband. <coughs> How do you feel? Okay. <clears throat> at, age, at age 11, that is, that's sick. Your grandfather, a grandfather. So on TikTok, I got um, somebody that says, even grandpa in New York in relationship with her granddaughter, she was pregnant at the age of 11. That is sick. So 11 years old, pregnant. And then you can call this child, um, what you're going to say? This child was fast. This child is not fast. This child was never given an opportunity to even be a child. Her innocence was taken from her at the age where she would even start understanding her body. To even understand what it's like to really be a girl. Because at the age of 11, just a baby. Go up on that movie. <clears throat> Excuse me. My grandfather would have been dead. I don't, I, uh, yeah, he would have been dead. Truly, truly, truly been dead. So this child is going to be their uncle or their aunt, and then also a child to me. Come on. When, what, do we, what do we do? This is, a, you know, this is America, and it still goes on, and they still sweep it under the rug. Can you imagine how it goes back home? How it is back home? The mentality of this sick men. And you know, some of them are so sick, they can't do it in the United States. So they go home and then they take a young little girl. Like, you're going to see my 15 ans, 18 ans, when they go back home. You're going to see my 60 ans. But because you're so sick, 
Because you can't even say, Tintin, you can't even say, at least you can't even say, you can't even say, you can't even say, you can't even say, so they go back home and they do it with young little girls who unfortunately is hungry for money. Their um, parents are needing money, so they are the business. So these little g girls are messing with um, jasperas, you know, as they call them. You get 15 ans, 18 ans, 16 ans, you have couché with a grand monde qui l'entre 100, 50, 60 ans qui sont aux États-Unis. Avec you. But, you know, that's the unfortunate thing. That is the unfortunate thing. A lot of them do that. So, you know, when you... Les yol ici, tu connais que si Allemand est un petit peu voisin, non. Si Allemand est un petit monde, il y a foutu en prison. So because of that, yo pa... Yo, yo, tu j'en calme, yo ici, là. Mais yo tellement malade, yo tellement gen problème. Yo la Haïti, yo prend petit monde 16 ans, 15 ans. Petit monde pour pou faire madame papa. Pour yo ba un petit cop pour aller en plage. Et puis par an, yo même nan ki un petit vici, ki grand goût. Ki besoin l'argent. Faites-y mon youtube et marchandise. Faites-y mon youtube et marchandise. So, again, I want these lives to be interactive. I don't want to be just the person on there talking to myself. I'm talking to you guys, but I would love for you guys to join me. You know, um, you could talk about a general a general uh, um, topic, something that you know in general. You could maybe even talk about something that you knew when you was back back home. You know, that happens too. And it's still offensive. If your wife says no, it means no, you cannot, you should not be forcing yourself on her. Yes, wives are supposed to please you guys. Yes, they are supposed to do their wifely duties. But if you guys are in an argument and they say they don't want nothing, you need to respect that. That's also against the law to rape your own wife. There's men that do it. There's men that feel like you belong to them. So therefore, as soon as, you know, like, you, you don't have the right to say no to them. Yes, a woman can say no to her husband, and he should respect that. He should not force himself on her. Because once you force yourself on her, it's now becoming a crime. She has the willpower to say no to you. So you should respect that. So, you know, like I said, rape is not, it's not something you can ever forget. When men is raping their own daughters, their own stepdaughters, their own nieces and nephews, we need to be alert. We need to understand the severity of what it's like when you take somebody's innocence. How do you affect them in the long run? There are many people suffering in marriages today it's because they were raped as young girls. And then, you know, sometimes to super bon bon mari, if you don't have a good husband, you let them know they use this against you. <laughs> you know what's funny? It's not so funny, it's actually, but you know, we, we like to use that word. I remember, um, my am Kabano personal pam because I'm not. I'm not going to come on this platform and hide the fact that I remember when I first met my mom and I told her, I said, oh, mom, you know, I was raped, whatever. And I told her, I said, who had raped me and everything. And then when things started going down and she started abusing me and stuff, and then it's up to you, pack it, bun, mon, pack it, bun, bag, I, oh, mon, ze koné, sam koné, that's the, that's the Haitian mentality, right? Like, Haitian parents are never wrong. They can be abusing you, but they will always find a way to always somehow make you feel like you are the problem. So, always saying, oh, oh, she knows what I know. Like, to the point where it's so sick that your child told you that she was raped. You use that as a juma for her. You use that whenever you cuss in her to be able to degrade her as, as a weapon. That is beyond sick. And being, you know, they also sick that they don't understand what they do into your self-esteem. 
what they're doing to you, to you now, and what they're doing to your future. You cannot let it go until you've spoken about it. You cannot forget, forgive your attacker until you have spoken about it. Your attacker, I think the best way to even move on sometime is either that bastard is dead, 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 yeah, that wouldn't work. An apology won't give me back my virginity. An apology won't give me back my innocence that you took. An apology cannot put my veil back on. An apology cannot make me feel. Can I take the hurt that you poured upon my life? An apology cannot take away the fact that sometime when you choose to give yourself to somebody, you envisioning that bastard that took your innocence away. That an apology cannot, even him dying can take it away, but at least it's satisfactory. I'm sorry, but yeah, I, I don't have no, no, no heart once you hurt me. Once you hurt me, I don't care if you're dead. It is what it is. Sometimes people like you build up, be, be, are better off dead than alive because if you could take somebody's innocence, then what? why should you be alive? An apology cannot take away you screaming, you telling the person to leave you alone, you trying to move your body away from that person, and you so little. An apology cannot do that. So I don't want an apology from my attacker. It won't do nothing. It cannot change back the time of clock. It cannot change back what's happened. And it cannot, it can't fill in that hurt, the void. So would you want an apology? Because sometimes when people apologize, it's for themselves. Sometimes when people apologize, it's to make themselves feel okay with what they did. There are things people do to you that will never be okay. Give this thing about guy. Your moon fell. Why some okay have a son? So why moon not do the sorry? Or excuse them to tell bad guy. So I'm going to finish. I'm going to let see. I'm going to efface my memory. Because I'm going to kill my memory. I'm going to efface the douleur because I'm going to kill my memory. La bomb virginity is back. Voir qui n'ont tête moi. Laisse que ou gon moun nou vle vivre avec elle, ou partager quoi avec elle, ou imaginer malandrin ça qui t'a violé là. Will it take it back? Non, il va faire. So qui veut dire why I'm based on apology from somebody like that? No, I don't want your apology. You could drop dead to me that makes more that makes way better sense. Way, way, way better sense that makes for me. You know? Um, share the life for me, people, please. Share it for me. Ay, ay, ay. Give me one minute. Are you okay? Give me one minute, guys. I think I might share an anonymous.
Okay, so guys, it's real. And when I said it's real, it's real, right? I got a message. The person will remain anonymous. She was abused by her village from the time from 9 to 15 years of age. From 9 to 15 years of age. A child was being abused by her village. And remember at the beginning I said to you guys, sometimes it's not one person. Especially when you are in the Caribbean. You're not violated by just one person. You violated by many. And from that, and her mom never believed her. Her mom never believed her. She said it was a nightmare for her. She had nightmares for years. And <laughs> hmm. for me. So her attacker, well, she was abused by her village. Her attacker was somebody that was close within her, her, her home, basically. Okay? Her home. A brother. Okay? But her mom never believed her. Her mom never believed her. For her, she said, she said, I'm going to read this part because it has nobody's name. He told me, if your mom didn't believe you, why did I think anyone else would believe you? I used to have nightmares about it all the time. Um, she was even, it happened even to she was in the military. It even happened to her while she was in the military also. And she said, um, she said, I used to have nightmares about it all the time. But once my attacker apologized and I accepted and accepted the responsibility of what they did in front of their mom, she never had the nightmare no more. Because it hounded her. It followed her to her the age where she's at today. She said she was able to at least, I guess, have a better understanding of her attacker, but she still cannot forgive her mom because she told her mom this was happening to her and the mom never took her serious or never looked into it. And yeah, I can understand that. There's some men that want to change a little girl's diaper and you have to understand that, you have to respect that. Because, especially if it's not their own child, you know, it, it, they won't feel comfortable doing it and that's understandable. But please share the life for me, guys, share the life for me. Um, if we could get more people on this, if you don't want to come on and you want me to share your story with my audience, I don't mind, you could text it to me either on on you could text to my number 321-368-2641 or you could message her this person sent me the message on messenger you can send it to me i don't mind i will share that for you because again that's why i said so there are stuff that is going right here in our backyard sometime in our homes we refuse to believe it's happening because we don't want I mean, I guess it's like, how does a mother feel calling the cops on your own daughter, on your own son? My son raped my daughter. That is not an easy thing as a mother to do. I get it. But you need to stand behind your daughter. You need to support your daughter. And, you need, and your child needs to learn a lesson. If your child does not learn that lesson, who else will he rape? Who else will he violate? The responsibility is not, it's not easy. I get it. I'm calling the cops to have my son arrested because he violated my daughter. Whew, that's not easy. I get it. I understand that. 
but you have to be a mother. Your daughter's being abused. Who else is your son abusing? Why is my life flag for personal information? I'm not giving nobody's personal information out. Why is that? Okay, I guess some somebody may not like what I'm doing because they are basically flagging my, my life. Um, says for personal information. If anything, I think I'm giving my personal information. I'm um, giving my story. I'm talking about general things that's going on in our community, but okay. Um, I guess I'm hurting somebody's feeling. I'm sorry. No, I'm not. I'm not sorry. Um, so as a mother, I feel like you'll be put in a very awkward position. I get it. But your daughter should be feeling safe at home. Your daughter should feel comfortable to call the cops and you're just going to have to hurt. You're just going to have to hurt. But you need to help your son out so he doesn't continue doing what he's doing because somebody else could take his life. Would you rather your son locked up and alive or dead? You pick because somebody like that that can rape their own sister. Their own sister should not be, be allowed to be in the public. Because if you could rape your own sister, my God, what is your limit? What's your limit? Do you even have one? You can't have a limit if you can rape your own sibling. If you can rape your own daughters, you cannot, you don't have a limit. And society should not be welcoming you for you to even be here. Because one of the, I don't think a man should ever even be able to, to get hard for their siblings, for their, for their child. So if you can get to that level to even rape them, how sick are you? How sick are you? I want to definitely tell my follower, thank you for that story. Um, that allowed me to, you know, share a light on on her story to let you guys know there are a lot of people out there that want to talk about them being molested, them being hurt, being taken advantage of, but they don't have a voice. And the voice they needed was their parents sometimes, and those parents are not listening. Those parents are not supporting them. The parents are hiding them, pushing them under the rug. What about you? That's being hurt by your church member. You know, there's some boys that are now gay. They didn't choose to be gay. There's some boys that are gay because they was raped and molested by somebody in their community or in their surrounding. So because they took advantage of them, now they are into men because that's what was done to them. Guys, there's so much going on. There is so much that's not being spoken on in our community. What is your story? I love that. My fa my person says she is no longer a victim. She is a survivor. I love that. Many of us are survivors today. But do you know how many victims are still be are still out there? That needs rescuing. Have you checked in on your sister? Have you checked in on your daughters? Single dads that has daughters. That um that they're not living in the household. Have you had a talk with your daughter to let them know that please if anybody touched them uncomfortably? Let them know. Don't don't put stuff in their mind to be done evil because I know sometimes let no look after evil things for them to them. But Talk to your daughters, guys. 
Have a conversation with your little girl, especially if you're not in their lives at home. Let them know that if somebody touched them inappropriately, they you if they're not comfortable telling their mom or if they tell their mom, the mom is not addressing it. They need to pick up the phone and call you and say, Dad, this is what happened. Don't make up stories because we know that people has tended... Kids sometimes do that because people put stuff in their minds. Be careful how you educating them. You got to sit your daughters down, guys. Ladies, sit your daughters down and talk to them. Let them know that there's certain parts of their body nobody should ever touch without their, their permission. Let them know that there's even... Here's another thing we guys need to watch out for. There's some men that like to kiss little girls on the lips. Kids are very affectionate. They will do that not knowing because as the mom, they could kiss you as the mom or, you know, they kiss the dad, whatever, on the lips, you know, like, like a peck. They need to understand that they cannot do that to everybody. They need to understand that it's not okay to let nobody do that to them. Nobody should touch your chest. Nobody should touch your cuckoo. Nobody should touch your butt. You need to have this conversation with your daughters, guys. If you have little girls, you need to talk to them. Because these kids, their minds are not like yours. We didn't have social media. They have social media. So how are you going to educate your daughters? To make sure that they know the do's and the don'ts. How are you going to educate them to let them know that what they should do if somebody touch them inappropriately? Are you comfortable enough with your daughters? Are you having conversation with them? Pour mettre au chita pour nous dire si on nous manie ou inappropriately pour y avoir parlé avec ou si on pense senti que maman y a pas tendu y a pour nous même tout pour nous faire connaître que y a pour y avoir prendre téléphone là pour y aller non et moi je crois que nous gagnons pile travail pour nous faire là l'esprit nous la communauté nous pour nous assurer que tu nous y a pas peine surtout dans cette situation comme ça Surtout dans une situation comme ça. Le moment où vous avez un petit nous, assurez que si vous êtes confortable enough pour vous parler avec nous. Je vous dis, je vous dis encore, monsieur qui est une petite fille, si vous ne pas cacher la relation pour vous faire des choses Il faut que les petites choses ne soient pas rendues de vos relations. Try to hold on to your relationship if you can for the sake of raising your daughter. Again, there's a minimum, I think there's a minimum sick men out there that would violate their daughters. There are a lot of them that's, you know, a minimum I'm going to stay. But you don't know when you leave home, you leave this child with the mother. Sometimes Sometimes, you know, they have to go to work. And unfortunately, to them, this is the man that I'm with. So this man is like a father figure to my daughter. So they go away thinking that this man is not going to violate that child. Little do they know while they are at work, working hard, somebody's abusing their child. But when they think quicker, if it's you as their father, that's not going to happen. When they think quicker, if it's you as their dad, you're going to be more protective of your daughter than to abuse her. Hey, ladies, if your child is going over their father's house, be careful. You gotta be careful. You gotta be alert. And you need to talk to your daughters to let them know when they're over their dad's house, the do's and the don'ts. Their friends come over, that's not their... And another thing I'm saying too, I can tell you not to be less, man. When you when you when when you having conversation, grown up conversation, your kids should not be there. Certain conversations are not age appropriate for these kids. 
So if you're having a conversation, grown people conversation, this child should not be there. En bas bouche. You know, like, like them grandmen would say, en bas bouche. To be there, listening to a certain conversation. But you need to sit your child down. She thought, I'm going to tell you, she thought, I'm going to tell you, 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 Et le pendant qu'elle va pas là, prudent, mais comment, mais comment. Faut faire si mon a senti que le seul côté l'encol, si mon a hugli, quand j'en veux hugli tout, because you cannot, you cannot tell the child to be rude. So if they over their dad house, for example, they have to greet their people, they have to, you know, greet the um the family members, whatever. You need to let them know. Don't ask your uncle. There's certain places they should not be able to touch you. Don't ask your 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 brother, there's certain place they should not be allowed to touch you. Talk to your kids, educate your kids. As step fathers, please, those kids are supposed to be like a child to you. If you have, and some of you guys have daughters and you guys are still abusing somebody else's daughter. Like I said today, I'm only talking about sexual abuse. We will discuss um, different topics on a weekly basis. Um, if they need to revamp and come back, they can. But today I'm talking about just the sexual abuse. If you have a daughter, for example, and your daughter's not living with you, and you're going to go with, um, you're going to be supporting um, another woman that might have a daughter, think about it. Would you want somebody to be raping your child? So why would you rape somebody else's child? Guys, rape is a big thing. It's big. Vraiment, vraiment, vraiment big. Thank you for sharing the life, um, Fanny. I appreciate that, sweetheart. Thank you. Rape is not easy. People don't come over that. They don't. We don't get over that. Cicatrice qui quitte la tête ou un. La la vous, ça le fait affecter la vie ou l'un. Qui a pu l'asper qui a fait la vie au monde là l'Elvin Grand de Messi de Vey. Gain en apprenant et tout topic ça yo. We going to touch all these different topics in these lives as we do them. We going to grow together. I want you guys back every Sunday at 6 p.m. I want to do this because I want to make sure that we all understand that we are all responsible to bring light to these issues that are happening right behind, right in our backyard, in our community, in our surroundings, in these churches. So many of you guys know somebody that's being abused by a church member. But because they buddy-buddy with the pastor, the deacon, whatever, because they deacon in the church, or that, or that, that um, um, come early with elder, you know, on like this one, you back up minister. For example, and for the story Orlando, the story that was real big in Orlando was Le Pastor Billy was, was raping these little girls, violating these little young girls at the church. The community was so quick to hide and, and, and stuff about saying, oh, he didn't do this, he didn't do that. Why do we do that? Why do we, anybody that's in the church that's singing, that's a church leader, why are we so quick to defend them? Say they didn't do this. You know what I love about it? They're so quick to tell you, why are you judging? Are you God? Do you know he did it? Would you be okay if it was your child that he did that to? Okay, we're not the judge. We're not going to, but let's not try to stone somebody else for condoning what they did. I watched a video of one of the little, um, one of the um, lead singers that used to be in the church groups in Orlando. And, 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 you know, I'm watching and I'm seeing these people just fighting for him. Why are you doing that? It's people like you that condone this crap. It's people, the person would not be locked up in prison if there wasn't enough evidence against them. But why are you so quick to want to defend the person? Because you believed in his talent. Because you believe in him in the church. Because you did that. But meanwhile, would it be okay if he did it to you? Would it be okay if he did it to your child? Why are we so quick to defend these molesters why are we so quick to defend this this um this 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 job via we always so quick 
pour nous dire oh et elle pas fait tel bagaille oh qui a souillé ou même oh you so good no we not no, not a, one of us is perfect but there's some crap that we need to stop and we all need to voice it so it's like especially the persons in the community he's a leader oh my god he does it we all want to act like it never happened but the little boy down the street does the exact same thing we want to condone throw stones at him you automatically believe he did it but it, when it's somebody in your in your in your in, in 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 your church or somebody that you all look up to that does it all the matter or oh, he's innocent and proven guilty or you don't believe he did it or you ready to rip somebody's head off because of the simple fact that um you ready to rip somebody's head off because of the simple fact that um you believe in that person but you have to the same opinion you would have about Jack that's not your idol that's a nobody to you who's somebody to somebody else the same way you can believe Joe did that you need to believe Jack did that you need to believe there's a high possibility Jack could do that i i i hate the fact that so many people are hide behind the churches the religion Excuse me one moment guys you know I do have kids give me one moment give me one moment Herbiana Guys I'm on a live and you guys are really acting up Yana Stop the screaming Yana do you want me to come down there and help you cuz I will So stop the screaming you hear me Nia and Yana Yana, can you stop the swimming? Because yeah. I will come down and I'll pop you. Herbiana. Herbiana, stop. Do you hear me? And a six-year-old fighting downstairs. And the six-year-old is getting very loud because she wants me to do that. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, somebody said to me that these people in the church, they will talk about your tattoo, your piercing. They're quick to tell you you're going to hell. Uh, meanwhile, they'll be touching these little kids. And they're getting away with it as if they they better than, you know, like... Sweeping it under the rug because it's okay for them to do it. So, guys, I'm saying this to you guys simply because we need to stop making these people just because they're in, that you idolize them or you believe in them or they are in the in the church. I'm inviting you, and you better answer too. Um. Um, you know, just because you believe in somebody doesn't mean the person can do no wrong. Sometimes when we hear things, we hope that it is just a rumor. But before you so quick to come say, oh, they didn't do that. Oh, you're part fell way. You're part say sil way. Te, en. Um, avant ou kou idi, you're part fell way. Cheche kone. Cheche comprenne ni. Sim de ou mem dap stay quiet. Just to be quiet. So I don't shame myself. Because only thing I can say, map toujours dili. Just because. Ou reme ou moun. Doesn't mean that. Moun na pa ka fe un bagay man. So it's sad that, I, you know, I watched those comments and I was like, wow, look at them. They just don't believe these people could do the wrong. Like, what, ma repete pas te believe because, you know, everybody knew that and it was something bagay. That was wrong. And then it wasn't just Pastor Billy. How many other churches, other pastors knew where you take expose? They exposed so many of them. In South Florida, that was raping, taking advantage of these little kids. And it don't happen just in, it happens in Baptist churches. It happened in Seven Adventist churches. It happened in non-denomination churches. It happens um, in um, Catholic schools. It happens. So you have to understand at the end of the day, you cannot push nothing past nobody. So for me, when it comes to my daughters, I'm going to tell anybody. 
I've never been to jail. Never caught a case before. I have never, ever even been um, to, to a, I think I went to, my, I went to visit somebody in jail. They wouldn't let me in because I wasn't family, but I was going with a friend to go support them, right? So let alone, and I'm letting you know right now, I will be behind bars. Oh, mom, do you know even people? No lie. For my children, I will take you where I need to take you. Hi, Akino. Pupiti pam, mwen mem kidu. You hurt my child. If my child did not do anything to you, you go and do something to my kid. You rape my child, I'm gonna rape you. The best way I know how to. Sis, why? I end up in prison because I will, most likely I won't be able to think. I won't be logical. Or, malaitipu, I'm sorry. Truth be told, I will lo go learn about what my ancestors did. I will, bon, mem bwaka ima pou pou ma lesti pou ma pran de chen, koma, how Haiti defended the friends in America during the, um, <laughs> During the, the, the revolution, Sheria, Mbrala Haiti, pour me connaître, pour me relever les ancêtres moi yo. Grand papa, because moi même, I'm toujours dit ça. Si moi même, de maman Trevor Martin, m'dapral l'an pièce ancêtres moi yo. L'autre la qui te yo te tue, pas elle te al vole, ça c'est lui même. Si que, si pour me le connaître l'an pièce ancêtres moi yo, for me to find out what is it that I need to do, how I can handle you, I'm gonna handle you. If I don't want to go to prison, I'm gonna go to Haiti for you. There's two places you rape my child. There's two places I'm going. Either I'm going to prison or I'm going to Haiti. That's the reality. Because I will not watch my daughters or my kids go through life with what I went through knowing that their attacker was not dealt with. The mother preacher is dead. That's some, you know, as Bernie, Bernie Mac would have stated, is dead, but that's not satisfactory enough for me. There's not, it's not just, it's, it's funny. It's not, death doesn't, de death does not satisfy me because it doesn't take away. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I'm, I'm seriously, I'm going to rape you. If I have the opportunity to kill you myself, I will have something I'm going to rape you to period. But when it comes to my children, my daughters, I don't want them to ever live and have something in their lives, in their mind, in their heart, some kind of pain that can never be removed, knowing that somebody violated them and took advantage of them. So with that said, yeah, I will go to Haiti for you. I don't care. Because I don't, the love, to love your child, and to be okay with somebody hurting them and know that Munsa is alive like nothing ever happened. And meanwhile, this person that took your daughter's violent, uh, uh, um, innocent. Hey, I eat here. I come. Zanset Moyo, handle that. Do what you gotta do. Paske mpap joyavel, and I will not play with that. Ba joyala vipitik moi. Well, if I was Trayvon Martin's parents, Zimmerman would not be alive. I'm Pekulev, I'm not Masha Sukulev, Tanku, because they didn't get justice. Zimmerman would not be alive. Oh, two years ago, I'm going to and then you think it's okay, you're going to get away with it? They want to take my bag in religion, they want to take my bag in person. Parce que l'homme t'a souffri, m'a porté, ou c'est moi qui compte qui s'en passe pour mettre petit moi down. Ou n'y a la pour mon dit m'a ça que, you think it's okay for you to rape my child? Come on! You got life jacked up all over the place. When I mean all over the place, you got life jacked up. All I'm gonna say, ladies, make it comfortable for where, and educate your kids. Sometimes you need to ask them. Ask them, did somebody touch you? Anybody? Well, me, honestly, I check my daughters. When they small, I check them. 
on toujours checké yo on t'ai toujours fait ça comme si comme si les m'a fait toi les petites moi on toujours checké les m'a retiré by you know to her age even my 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 younger one la retiré qui l'autre souligne checké because guess what super so soyez so vigilant you have to be alert when it come to them oh yes um do I share ya I'm not gonna lie to you moi même pas gagner religion devant petit moi on mon moi on branche vers mes petit moi petit moi pas fort rien OK surtout les petit moi parce que tout le monde m'était venir voler il te font bagaille by all means j'ai reçu cher parce que c'est lui qui te perdit wall lui petit lui perdit wall but if you kill my child like the way Zimmerman kill my child ou pensez m'a garder comme ça c'est une crise pour moi l'en bilan l'en pied saint jean dit sud l'en au caill l'en l'en tout côté nous sortir si c'est pour marcher sur tout tout couleur m'a aller et sinon c'est pour m'aller l'en 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 côté marie me sortir pour ma jeune justice m'a joindre l'en quand ça pas grand monde qui ca dit merde because guess what gars mon qui tout prier la prière prend trop de temps pour le répondre because majority of the time what prier au par une solution ça yo because do like il ont même dans the hurt that's in you is it's still there do less i we no mba mba le vel non bagay mystique mbi na et mbi ni sit piti but si pou m fouye pou m konprann mystique m'a fouye si m gen nécessité pou li m'a konnel at mba m kwa nou tout net ka bagay li so moi même child let me tell you when it come to my kids i don't play that i will not play and i will not tolerate that so pou ni a pou m gen de petite fi pou m garçon pense que pou moi même hey Hey, what about him? I'm sorry. I am a sweetheart. On nous connaît, si nous suis moi, people will tell me bon cœur, me supporter en pile monde. Me faire un pile travail, me supporter monde. Me supporter, me supporter en pile monde dans communauté là et si on monde besoin. Ben, pas bien faire ça mal à la non, même c'est pas combien. Je ne sais pas si je suis pour nous connaître qui ça qui a passé dans la vie petite nous et nous même qui étions victimes de rap assurer que petite nous pas comme un victime de rap too you guys was um <laughs> um little little on tiktok little live on on tiktok little little mommy tell la tale but assurer que ça nous qui a passé nous est vidéo nous est um côté que nous est timoun I mean, I'm going go back video. I'm going to photo of you. I'm not going to look at it. Because we have 25 years of violence. It's like 5 years or 4 years. 5 years or 5 years. You're not done. Imagine a little baby like that, my friends. I'm going to go back to my little baby. I'm going to go back to my life. I'm going to go back to my life. I'm going to go back to my life. Come on. You got to understand. At the end of the day, you have to protect your children. The child, it's um, hi Ash, oh hi Kuz. <laughs> you have to twang why the baby was three months, and you're literally, 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 um, um, this I was 25 years old. He raped this little baby. Kunya, now as a mother, I'm supposed to be calm. I can't because first of all, if that baby survive. Si tout le monde s'est survécu, mes amis, est-ce que nous pouvons imaginer les cicatrices de la vie de tout le monde? Même les gens ne peuvent pas changer, mais moi, même comme maman, je vais rester ici. Non, bébé, je vais acheter un ticket, je vais aller à Haïti. Je vais aller à Haïti. Si ça s'est passé à Haïti, je vais aller à la côté de tes ancêtres. Je vais aller à la fin de comment mes ancêtres handlent les choses. Je vais aller à faire ça. Parce que ça ne fait pas de sens comment nous continuons à laisser ces enfants se rapper. Letting these kids get hurt, map di nou apre di nou anko. Si ke nou palan kay avek pitit nou, mesye yo, si nou palan kay avek pitit fi nou, asure ke nou toujou pale avek pitit nou, when you guys see them, you guys check on them, you guys make sure people are not touching them inappropriately. 
OK? Next, en même temps, you guys need to make sure que nous pay attention to your girls. If I just, and I'm going to say not just the girls. I kept saying this and I'm going to keep saying this. Not just the girls because now people are raping little boys too. If you are not at home with your children, be careful. Be careful and pay attention to your kids. When you drop them off, be careful who you drop them off to. Make sure that Papa Yoto, boy and women, Mbakache dit nous ça. I think si moi maman ils partent ensemble, même si m'da pour l'autre nég, nous connais que ça tape tellement pe, because nous connais que my husband would let it be known. Moi ma avec cause nous gagnons pas ensemble, mais où est si mon zayola? Où est si mon zayola? Mettez l'autre tête ou que ce soit Ce soit vieux ou vieux. So I think any men that would step into my life would know that these girls right here are off limit. Unless it's time for Papa to treat you. And it's not for Papa because we know that Papa is violent with you. So I think he's going to let them know unless we take care of it. If we take care of it, if we take care of it, it's just what we have to do. I think for my and petit mon lodge, I think I don't honestly I don't think anybody would be stupid enough to to, to even try one of my kids, même si moi et ma avait pas de patte ensemble, because I don't think that would be possible, because même moi même qui m'a mangé, si mon cas Leo son problème. You can I would love to have a guest. You on TikTok? Oh, we could do it here. It's up to you. It's up to you. Or you could request to come on live. You could request to be to come on live or join me and let's do the, let's join me on TikTok. That would be fine. I would actually love to have that because I I want the interaction. I don't want the live to be just me talking. Um, I want, I would love to have where I have different people talk, whether again, it's about theirs or whether it's about somebody they know it's fine. That's what I want. I don't want this to be a one man show. I want this to be all of you guys. So yeah. Yes. Ashley, what's it about? What's it about? It's about Don't worry. Oh, I don't think anybody would mess with them. That man right there. I gave birth to my daughter for one. Et tu as acheté un couteau, là, et pas couteau non, là, je t'en manchette. Les gros manchettes qui gagnent même là, j'ai appétit là. And then, he makes sure he's strapped. He makes sure he is strapped. Because when it comes to this man's family, I don't think anybody would want to mess with that. And les deux, pendant que nous avons prié, les mêmes, les gens l'ont prié, l'ont fait. That's it. So, yeah. Hi, Nassis. How are you, my love? Yeah, so you know, I'm I'm gonna be ending the live very soon, but I want if there's an advice I can give you guys for today's topic, for today's is to generally, Ashley, let me know if you're coming on TikTok. If you are coming on TikTok, I will take you. I'm sure that you know Facebook people can be able to hear, and they'll be able to hear what we are. What are you on Bluetooth? What Bluetooth are you on? Were you guys able to hear me on, on Facebook? Because for some strange reason, hi JJ, for some strange reason, it says that I was on Bluetooth, which I don't understand why. So yes, so it's just a matter of, okay. So I have a guest on, can you guys hear me now? Okay, you can hear me, okay. <clears throat> Ashley, I'm adding you on, so, <laughs> hey, tell him, come on. Tell him he could have a gun for, for, yes, he has one too. He has a couple of those too. For his daughters, he don't play. Okay, so it seems like you're still being added, Ash. Are you able to come on? Hi, Melin. 
Hi, Kuz. How are you? Let me see if it's going to let you do it again. I'm trying to add you on. But either way, if you come on, I think if you come on, we can, um, if you come on TikTok, I think Facebook should be able to hear you. But if you come on, on TikTok, Facebook should be, on um, Facebook, TikTok should be able to hear you. Um, again, the platform is everybody's platform. This is just not a Rose's platform. This is a place where I want you all to have a voice and come on and basically be able to talk about, you know, what we've bad. Um, yeah, it want, um, yeah, I see that. It's not letting you partake, apparently. But, um, if you're welcome to come on, on TikTok. Okay. But do you have, um, well, the TikTok, you need a thousand or more followers to be able to do that. So I don't know if it'll let you do it. Okay. So it looks like it might actually let me, um, accept. So guys, I have a guest on the, um. Hi, Rose. Ash, how are you? I'm, I'm going to have to talk loud. A little bit louder for me to can make sure that can you hear me now i can hear you can you hear me yes i can hear you i'm a, I'm, I'm agreeing with you when it comes to the like the the kids you have to check people sometimes people think that it's wrong when what? you check your kids without their consent but for me Hi. as be quiet for me as a good day, daddy for me as a parent i feel i felt like it's totally normal and i feel like in our haitian community it's like it's so hard that a lot of parents are not talking to the kids about um being touched especially by like okay like i have my my second daughter she, i have family that, oh come sit on my lap i don't agree with my kids i'm a rape victim i was raped hmm. at the age of eight years old hmm. by two of by three of my cousins which is my mom's nephews and the fact that give me a minute, give me a minute. so facebook are you able to hear this if you're in Facebook, can you let me know if you're able to hear Ashley? So Ashley is a rape victim. She was raped by two of her uncles, by the cousins. age of eight, by two of her cousins, by um two of her mom's nephews, by the age of eight years old. And continue, Ashley. And I don't speak about it because at the end of the day, people are gonna miss and judge you. You know what I mean? So. Um, after a, a three of them did that, right? I remember at the age of eight, they called the neighbor. Then they tell me, say, oh, if you speak, oh, we're gonna be, they beat me up so bad with a broomstick. And I, and I chose to say it because I, I've never speak about it, although some people know about it. But it hurts a lot sometimes because you have that little girl inside of you. That little girl still speaks to you. People don't get that. I have that little girl inside of my head. Sometimes it's like, it speaks to you. And I tried suicides four times. Nobody know about that life. Part of me, that life. And let, I'm me, the thing about let, this. let, me, let me agree with you. The things you've been through in life when you've been a rape, I don't they know. affect you in so many ways that, and then on top of everything else that you endured in your life, those things will make you want to take your life. Yes. I've been there. I have also been somebody that contemplated suicide on many attempts when I was in my younger life because of what I was going through amongst, you know, this week is about yeah. sexual abuse. Next week will be about physical abuse. You know, the things that, and, and it seems like as a rape victim, when you go through that, you get raped, it doesn't stop there. You just continue getting abused in any other type of ways in life. And the fact that I wasn't protected when I end up in a hospital, I, I remember end up in a hospital and the doctor told, said what happened. I felt like I wasn't protected by the person that's supposed to protect me. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. I feel like I wasn't protected. The fact that I didn't have a father in my life, I wasn't protected. And I wasn't like, you know, I feel like I never get justice for what happened to me. So like, I felt like it was okay. I feel like it was like so okay. You basically felt it was something normal. That it was, was normal. Because you was threatened that if you would if you tell, you would be bitten. You did not mm -hmm. have a father figure in your life. Hello. I think many of us that went through that, 
if it didn't happen by our father or somebody close, a lot of us did not have a father figure because it would normally happen by close family members. And I, I think if they knew that you had a father that would take a gun and shoot their ass or shoot them or take a knife and slash them in pieces, they would not dare to touch you like that. So, um, uh, it, it impacts even, so let me ask you a question, Ashley. I'm gonna let you talk, but I wanna, how does that impact your current life today with your relationship, your marriage? How does that impact Ashley as a grown up? Because like you said, that little voice still talks to you. When, how does that, how is that, how is that affecting you today? I was, I was married before, but my first husband back home, he didn't understand that because sometimes I have different personalities. I have split person. I have so many personalities I never knew I even had. But my husband now, Kenson, he, and many times that he didn't understand me when I go in depression mode. Sometimes I lock myself in the closet for like a whole day and he doesn't understand that. And when I come back to my normal life, I had to pull him aside. I say, babe, I said, I'm sorry. I went to like this mode, I shut down and I don't know how to like, like, I don't know how to, I, I, I can't, I can't communicate with you at that time because that little girl inside of me is telling my voices. And I tell him, he's like, Ashley, just tell, you know, in, in his Asian voice, tell me how I could help you. I said, the only way you can help me, take me out for a drive. I want to go for a drive, a simple walk. And I said, I need a, I need a lot of hug, a lot of re reassurance that it's, you know, and he helped me in so many ways that I never even knew until up to this day. Like today, we went for a drive. He's like, Hold on we right. went for a drive. Hold on right there. Hold your thought. Guys, this is why I ask if you have a story to share, whether it's personal yeah. or whether it is um, somebody else's story that you know of, you're welcome to share with me, right? What she said is so real. Yeah. Depression is real. Yeah. You go through this mode sometimes, you go through these depressions, you cry. Sometimes you're going through something, you think of everything you've been through while you was a child. How you are, he, where you are today, that's affecting your life, that you feel like you were neglected from the get-go. Sometimes you have a relationship that didn't work well, you basically go back to the foundation of how when you were hurt from when you was a child, to how every time things stop happening to your life in stages, and you basically put all of it together, bam, you hit depression mode. If you don't have somebody, like, I go to very little depression now because my husband doesn't allow me to do that. He does not allow me to go to depression because he's probably that, my reassurance, he does that for me, he gives that yeah. to me. So when you have a good, when you have that person that was met for you there he tends to fill you up to where you do not have room i I go to my moments i get to my moments like for me i keep myself busy with my real estate um guys you know again map to you know you know you guys know i am a realtor so if you guys need anybody to assist you guys in buying a home in florida or selling a home i can assist with that but i keep myself busy with my real estate and then my kids also sometime when i need a hug and i feel like i just take them and i hug them and you know the lack of love that we grew up with your your haitian parents don't know how to tell you they love you your haitian parents i never heard that word in my life by my parents exactly they don't know how to hug you <laughs> they don't know that they don't know how to say i'm sorry like for me i will i i whoop my kids but after i'm done i'll talk to them and i'll let them know i love them and if i'm talking to them and i'm wrong i don't mind apologizing but this is a lot of things that you go to depression once you've been raped and, and then life keep happening to you, you get depressed a lot. That's what, hence why the suicidal thoughts come in. So these things, or that's why I ask for the help because I did forget to mention about the depressions that we go through. Even as a married woman, your husband sometimes may not understand you don't want him touching you sometimes. And it's the like of, it's, the, it's those, that little girl in you that doesn't want to be touched. You know what's so funny is? Yeah. I am 36. And <laughs> it's sad to say, I still sleep every night with my underwear, my tights, my pants, my bra, my shirt. And you can ask my husband to this day. 
he and he and he's like babe when are you gonna be comfortable i'm like i will never be comfortable because i feel like somebody's gonna crawl to the window and has as him being a trucker i sleep in my room with a baseball bat i have a knife i have two little puppies to protect me i have my phone already in diamond one and i sleep i say by the time they rape me and i have my daughter she in the next room and she's sleeping under me because i don't want to sleep in her own room and i have full clothes i'm like okay put your clothes on by the time somebody come and touch you i'll be awake by then i'm 36 and i'm still sleeping with my full outfit on you still have an uncomfortability even with your own husband you don't and he still gotta ask me permission to touch because i'm always afraid that it's not him touching <laughs> Yeah, my husband had to break a lot of barriers. And I think one time he was like, why are you like that? Why? I mean, I mean why are you so uptight? Like, you're uncomfortable. What, what, what is going on with you? Like, you know, a lot of people, this is news to them. Like, they've never known this. But I feel like there's so many people. I'm hearing so many. As a realtor, I meet so many different people. And I hear so many different people. Some stories. So I'm like, okay, there's too much happening. And nobody's talking about it. And I'm like, last year when I saw that video, that, that comment where they said, um, oh, um, oh, he didn't do it. Oh, he didn't do this. He didn't do that. That bothered me that these young men are so quick to come to this dude's defend with defending him saying he didn't do it. Meanwhile, they all have daughters. Meanwhile, what if he did do it? That's your friend. How would you feel? Would you be okay? Are you going to be okay with him being in your surrounding around your daughters? So I'm like, okay, this is, this got to stop. And then I saw the indie thing when he was, you know, molesting these kids at the school and doing all that. And then I'm watching people defending this dude. I mean, come on. And then I know this young lady that's at the church, her parents know that the deacon is raping her, taking advantage of her. And he, and they are hiding it for this damn deacon. These things piss me off. That's so enough is enough. This, this girl will never be sane. She will never have a normal life of knowing. And you know what? What some, some people don't realize? Sometimes you go into having sexual activities at an early age. It's not because you wanted to. That's it's me. The age that has happened to you. Hmm. And I have a 17 year old. And think I, yeah, every day, yeah, I told her every day, and I said, this is what happened to me. And I don't want the same thing. She's like, mommy, why are you so protective? I'm like, this is the reason why I'm protective. I'm protecting you guys. And I will die protecting you guys because at the end of the day, nobody will touch my little girl or my boy. Nobody. I'm and I don't, I don't, I don't, I'm the black sheep of the family. I don't speak to families. I speak to my mom every day, once a day. I repeat the same thing over and over. And that's it. I don't speak to my family. I don't do nothing. And not because I put on pause, but it because that you guys fail me as families. I feel like you fail me as families. I've come to understand that family is a vast word. I've come to understand that family sometimes may not be the family you were born into. You cannot choose the ones you were born into, but you can choose who becomes your family. Mm -hmm. You can choose your family. You can choose that. And, and the fact that like until now I can't even I can't even bring talk up to, I can't even talk to my mom about anything. The man I bring so I said, Mom, we need to talk about that's what I'm to him. That's what I'm to him. So, you know, that's a subject I don't even have to bring because I can I can never even bring that up because the minute I bring it up, depression wanna kill her. So I'm learn I'm learning to shut all that is depression because I'm learning to shut my I can't I can't vent. I can't vent. And I only can vent to like um come on this time I'm okay all come on with your like shrink you what the shrink call again uh, um um counselor like, oh, those um... I've, been, I've been seeing these people for years I only can vent to them for so long I mean they helped but you know sometimes you wanna vent to some like someone that you know that you're gonna hug that you wanna That's gonna... you know yeah can I ask you a question mm -hmm. where's your attackers today where's my who your attackers they here they here in the United States. And I think one one is in Haiti, and the other two is here. And that my my other Malawula molested me. He's here, but I don't speak to them. The last time I saw one of them was at my auntie funeral in twenty nineteen. <laughs> I was at the funeral. I think I, I think I passed out <laughs> because you know all the memories came back, and that was when like everything just came back fresh, came back fresh. Like I like. 
I was shaking. I don't know if I peed my pants, but I think I did. It was the most terrifying, terrifying, I don't know, day of my life because all the, I was, I had to hold my daughter so close because I was shaking and scared at the same time. I'm like, oh my God, it's going to happen again. It's going to happen again. But then I'm like, okay, I need to, as soon as we came from the funeral, I walked out the funeral. Oh my God, I was back home. Do you have, um, would you ever want to confront them? Do you think confronting I would, them would help I would, you? I would love to. I would love to, but I know what it's going to bring them down to my family, but especially my mom, her relationship with her sister. Do I know what's about that. Huh? Do you care about that? I, I don't, by the end of the day, I care about how my mom feels because I, I know, I know how my mom goes. She's, my mom is like the dramatic type. She's going to, she, what this thing is. little girl in you that deserve to know why, why did you take my, my, my I, I, I do deserve to know why, but you know, sometimes I just don't even think about it. Sometimes, I don't know. Sometimes I just shut it out by working three jobs or two jobs or whatever, but I would love to know why I would love to speak to know, you know, I would love to. And I, and I pray that they don't have daughters. No, one of them, I tell them, I said, I pray that the day you have a daughter, they catch you with your daughters. And I tell them cold. I told them, I said, the day I know one of the day that I pray to God that you have a daughter, they're going to catch you with your own daughter. And that's something I, and I, that's a curse that I curse them with every day. <laughs> but so, I would, I would love to, you know, sit and, and I remember last year, was it last year? Yes. My last year, my mom came to visit and I had to go to Miami to go see my mom. And I was sitting in a room right next, right across from one of them. And I was shaking so much. And my, I was holding my daughter so tight next to me. I couldn't move. I would not be in that house. But because of my mom, I came. Um, I, I wouldn't be in that house. I would see my mom outside that house. If that's but as, soon as, I, as soon as I got off my, I went in my car, I broke down. I, when I say broke down, I broke down where I couldn't drive. But Kenton was also in Miami, so with me, but he didn't, he, and as soon as he was like, as soon as he saw me walked out, he just gave me a hug. He's like, I'll drive. I'm like, okay. And he's like, how was it? I'm like, that's, that's all I could think about. You know, sometimes all the little girl in my head came back, all that, all that thoughts. Hmm. That little girl never go away. It will never go away. I, I don't know. I don't know. Maybe some people for them, it's go away. They normal. But for me, I don't, I don't, I don't know. I don't think that that something that every time because here's the thing it keeps happening yeah it may not be happening to you anymore but it's happening to somebody yeah so because it's it's, it's it keeps happening it's a repeated cycle you tend to remember your moment you tend to relieve your moment that little I girl feel like, i feel like as haitian parents a lot of haitian parents i should say in our community they don't they don't they, they don't protect the kids the way they're supposed to I, I, only, Marjorie, they, don't hear, they don't hear them out because they trust them they're like oh because oh he's my brother i trust my brother i must go to the shop my mom my mom went to the store when that happened to me my mom went to the the mache you know the haitian mache mm -hmm. she went to the mache and she left me there and she left there but i had a female cousin there at that time but my female cousin she, she i think she went down the street i can I can tell you how they smell, what they was wearing. I remember all of that. She went down the street and she's like, oh, for just Ashley Lowry? And, and they beat me up. They beat me up. And when they threw me down on the floor, they rubbed my face on the dog. There was a dog poop right there. They rubbed my face right in it. And I know I'm healed from it because before I couldn't, I couldn't speak. And you know, now I can speak without breaking down, but now way to, you, 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 I think you on your way to let it go, mm -hmm. but to be able to give you, you, that little girl in you, the opportunity to grow with you. Um, Marjorie said, don't let your mom be a blockage mm -hmm. to your mental freedom. And she needs her. She also needs therapy also. The problem is, Marjorie, we know that every Haitian parents need therapy. I'm sorry, they need it. If it's not I for- tried, I tried bringing back my mom, but I don't, she don't want to hear it. So. Um, if it's not for one thing, it's for another. But I do think that because of society, we we fear of how the gummons are going to feel. 
like right now for me i know there are some stuff that's gonna be said in this life that i might be stoned for but i'm not holding back no more i am tired of thinking about your feelings when you never cared about mine mm -hmm. i'm tired of thinking about how my mother is gonna feel when people hear the abuse that i endured by her hand then if i do i will never heal i want to be able to heal i want the world to understand that i am where i am today because i'm determined but not because life was handed to me not because the opportunities was handed to me i fought for me to be who i am today and i have not yet reached where i want to be but on the way to do that i need to let go a lot of barriers i need to let go a lot of um a bondage a lot of weight that i have on me hey lolo how are you my love so because of that i no longer care about how people feel because i'm not telling your story i'm telling my story this is my life they happen to me so i don't give a crap about how you feel when people find out that i'm letting the world know that you abused me i don't care i'm sorry i don't want to wait if if i wait till you die to tell my story then i'm a coward i can't move into my life because i'm not gonna wait because then i'll be talking without giving you a voice and not that they care to get a voice anyway because they're never gonna apologize they never know that they did anything wrong no so i'm not going to allow myself to be buried into this because you know one thing kazu à chaque fois on est en relation relation pas marcher bien and that's why i said i want to this is gonna be next week because i'm not because i've been on here for almost two hours um today but i'm gonna end the live soon because <clears throat> everything that you, every stages that you go through in life it affects the next stage and the next stage and the next stage mm -hmm. every time that i would be dating somebody and things didn't work out right i go back to the foundation where i was not love yes <laughs> I go back and I said, "Si ma mom ki ma mom pa re mem pa de bam l'amour, pa de kè de mwen mem, kòman pou ou nèg fè re mem." Mpa de kon papa, mpa pa mte kètan mouri. My father died when I was six. I never had a chance to meet him. So I can speak for him, but I regret all my life that the fact that my father died, I never had a chance to know him because I've heard about him, but I would have liked to have my own experience with him as well. But knowing that your own mother your own parents wasn't there to protect you and love you don't treat you good how can you expect a man to love you and treat you good these are the things that it do to you as a child because what you did not get as a child when somebody else mistreat you you take it back to the foundation mm -hmm. your protector was supposed to be your parents they weren't there to protect you so i think majority rape victim go through a cycle of different men in their lives and they don't understand why they keep going away from them mm -hmm. because no matter sometimes how good of a woman you are there's a cycle that repeats itself and because it's unknowingly to the universe you go through these sometimes because you are a victim of being of rape but it also is because of you being afraid to open up letting somebody love you letting that person you can't give yourself to somebody freely because you never thought you were never you never started out giving your body to a man freely so because you were never open and because you never started off that way it was done by force you haven't learned how to properly really do that it's mm -hmm. you, you even when you still not freely you know i, I guess so either either you become closed up or you become you you out there and a lot of women tend to be more out there when they've been raped they be they be they they, they they out there they do re regular stuff they have sex all over the place they become yep. strippers 
They be, you know, a lot of them do that. Because that's how they cope. Yep. yep. But then you have the ones that, um, <clears throat> you have the ones that are very closed up. That no matter how old we are, you know, I'm only 30 for the record. <laughs> that still don't know how to freely, freely gives our husbands the best of us even to today. Mm-hmm. But it's for me. It's it's a it's a part of life, and I as I, I was listening to that to to you to the life, and I'm like, wow. I'm like somebody's finally speaking. But I'm but I'm sorry to say the cycle will continue as long as our parents don't protect us. But it's up to us, the second generation, because I could say this first generation, we don't have to, you know, the second and third generation now, as we as in our 30s and we having kids now, it's our job to not allow the, you know, to repeat itself. Break that curse. We have to. Protect them, it will be repeated. And you know, sometimes that's why some parents, let me tell you something that I've studied too. That's why some parents don't defend their, um, their child. Because it happened to them. Nobody did nothing about it. Because people made them felt like it was okay to be done to them. Mm -hmm. They don't know how to defend their child now. Be and, I, and, and I don't know if it was Women That Are Loose, which is a show that um, Tyler Perry had with, um, what's her no, name? No, I watched it, yeah. I don't know if it's if it was that movie or if it was another one. And guys, I watch a lot of um, shows because sometimes these are relate. Me, I like to watch stuff that relates to me. Um, correct, correct, um, correct, Laura. It will not continue in my household, but it does continue in other people's households. Mm -hmm. Because we can, we break in the cycle in our household by being open with our children and ensuring that it doesn't repeat itself. But you have women, because it has happened to them, they never cope with it and they never have a voice. So when it's happening to their daughter, they allow them if they allow it to happen. And then I've even heard in the movie where she said, when it happened to me, my mother told me it was okay. Yep. That my mother um, didn't do nothing about it. So I didn't know how to be a shoulder and how to react to you to it. So that's the thing. It's just like us, we've been abused. We need to, it, once you acknowledge, and that's why I tell you, once you acknowledge you've had a problem, you can then break the cycle. Mm -hmm. A broke person cannot fix a broke person. I am broken, but my goal is because I've acknowledged that I am broken, I want to make sure that my children are not broken. Do we tend to follow the footstep of what you've all known for all your life? Yes. Can you rectify that? Yes, but you have to be awake. You have to realize that you were broken for you to make sure that your kids are not broken. And it doesn't mean that you're not breaking them, but you can stop early. For me, I'm not gonna, I remember when I caught myself one time because I have one of my sons that done tried my patience and I got so mad one day and I was whooping him and then I had a flash of myself and I said, wait a minute, you are, if you don't stop yourself at an early age, you are going to become your worst nightmare. Mm -hmm. I don't want to be that. So I broke that cycle because I realized to myself, that's why for a long period of time, I don't do the disciplines. I talk, I let my husband handle the booties because I didn't want to be a repeated of Cause some, cause anger, when you are broken guys, mm -hmm. when you've been through some things in your life, the anger that you've had, the anger, you do not know how bad it is until you have kids of your own that's disappointing you. And maybe that's doing something and now you're disciplining them. 
And then you catch yourself like, yo, what the heck is going on with you? You have to understand that a broken person can only raise a broken child unless you have captured yourself and say you will not be, um, um, what's the word I'm looking for? You will not be a protege of that broken home, of that broken person. Like for me, I love Ayana. I wish I could be an Ayana because <laughs> I feel like that's somebody that I really love to look at. I am a, um, um, fix my life because mm -hmm. I connected with her after watching one show. And I realized that's when I said, okay, I'm broken. The lack of education that our parents had caused them not to protect us because they don't know how to protect us because they weren't protected themselves. So it won't be repeated for me, but do we know how many were from mother to grandmother, from grandmother to mother to daughters that's being raped out there? Because not one of them was taught to protect and not one of them has woken up. And then these kids are having kids on top of that? 15, 16 years old kids, 18 year old kids, parents think it's okay to come on Facebook. Hey, I'm a grandma. My baby had a baby at 15. I'm not, that's not a proud moment for me. I'm sorry. It's not a proud moment for me. It's a dangerous moment. Once your 15, 18 year old kids are having kids, how do they protect these kids? Because they themselves are still babies. Mm -hmm. So sexual abuse never leaves you. Just like physical abuse never leaves. And there's physical, there's verbal. And we know that unfortunately under this flag, the lack of education from our great grandparents, our parents, the nun talking. You guys know I grew up as a kid. Though I was raped, I didn't even know that was sex. <laughs> sex is not something they talk about. That's another thing that paralyzes us, handicap us. Growing up in this um in the Haitian community as kids back home and stuff like that, you don't know how to really open up sexually with your mate because sex is not something that gets talked about. Sex is sex is dirty it's supposed to be dirty in the bedroom but they make sex to be very dirty like it's something that is so inappropriate that you know like the minute that a sex topic come up no took like ooh, that's embarrassing you know so it's a lot of things we've been paralyzed by a lot of things um somebody on facebook say to piggyback on what you just said broken people get the label violent but i call it defensive true it's not just disciplining your kids just a little verbal dispute on give me just a little verbal dispute can turn into a blood bad a, a blood bad because they tend to black out so easily okay yeah I, i'm i'm glad i think i managed my i handled myself well to where i don't end up being into that because I had a lot, so next week's, um, is going to be a different topic. So you guys will learn a little bit more about me again. So that will help you guys understand. I didn't just, I didn't ha have to fight just the battle of sexual, um, just, you know, leaving with the fact that I was raped. I was taken advantage of by friends of the family, by different people that's in your family and stuff like that. I wasn't, I did, I had to, once I come to the United States, I had to fight another demon. I had to fight another battle. Um, you know, so those are things that we'll be talking about. Yeah, I understand you were saying blood on um, bloodbath. If you know what's the biggest, what the biggest demon after being raped? Mm -hmm. Who's the biggest demon? Ourselves, our inner selves. Why do you say that? Why do you say your um, our inner self is our biggest demon? Why do you, you think know, so? The reason why I think so, after you've been raped, you left to fight that person that whatever that you know when, when when you know when you put that evil sperm inside of you you left to fight that little girl in your head you like you, you left to fight that that demon inside of your head that demon is like you're not you're unworthy you're dirty you're not good enough you're not pretty enough all my life i always feel like i didn't know I how to love myself until until i was 30 i'm 36 now until like 
for three years ago because I always thought I wasn't pretty. I wasn't smart. I was I wasn't beautiful. I my breast too big. My booty not big enough. My stomach, you know. I don't think you were. I don't think you were. You become your biggest demon. I think you were so shattered. Your self esteem, everything from you, all your beauty. You were developed. So all your beauty, everything, your inner self was taken from you. Now, um, I don't think, it, the thing is, it's not just, it, 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 here's what it is. These things were happening to you, but you don't know what happened to you. I didn't realize I was raped until I was the age of 16. I mean, like when I said, like really realize what it meant. Because when it happened for me, I remember I was crying, I was screaming, and then my uncle was like, he heard my voice. And then he was saying that he thought, he, though he said, I recognize that voice. But then he also said to me, he thought it was a child that they were disciplining, that they were whooping. So then he didn't follow. And he went and left and his way back home. He still heard the struggle and he still heard my voice. And at that time, I think I was, I was about to black out. And then he followed the voice and then Kim, and 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 went and and you know I had words with the guy whatever, and my great uncle at the time was like um I would say maybe um what's a, a mayor maybe um chef section I don't know if I don't know what to call the chef section in Creole, so know. he was a chef section, and then he was um little parler les tontons moins or whatever and I remember me said pleading and begging and then my uncle told him. I remember my uncle saying that to him. But then as a child, when the other, my older cousins and siblings and stuff found out what happened, then they started calling me Madame Negla. Like, oh, c'est Madame Etelouye. Like they made that into a joke, which basically- It's not a joke. You, it's not a joke, but at, at a child at seven, eight years old back home, I didn't know, like I said, sex is not something that that was there. I mean, I know in the Bahamas is different, but in Haiti, as the kids back then in the 80s, sex is not something that people talk about. So you don't know what just happened. I didn't know what just happened to me. I was a child, but like, oh, yo, that's how they were. So I didn't realize, even though I understood what, I, I mean, I'm not gonna say I understood, I knew um, something happened bad to me. And when I came here, I was 11. I told my mom what happened. My mom um, then said, for real, what happened? And I told her because my mother was never told that I was raped with, um, um, by when, I, when, I, when, I, when she left me when I was a kid. My mother left me, I think I was like one year old. My mom left. So I, never met, I didn't meet my mom till I was 10. And then from 10 years old, um, then I came here when I was 11. So I told my mom that. My mom didn't find the use to sit down and educate me. She basically now with amongst of everything that she was doing, that was now your on Juma That was like all oh, some and stuff like that, which was very inappropriate. I'm like, are you freaking serious right now? I didn't fully understood that I was raped, taken advantage of until I was 16 years old when I was, you know, dating my um the, the person I can say honestly for me um hi that i can say for me that i acknowledge that i lost my virginity at 16 but that was not you know i was already taken advantage of when i was younger so it's like there was lack of education and and and, and it's all over it's not just through, towards sexual being sexually abused is not the only thing that our community lacked of education the lack of education overall and I think had there be education, if these governments was educated, I don't think that's how they would have approached that. But then again, I'm finding it's not just that. Maybe it's not just, I'm going to say black communities, period. Because a lot of them didn't know how to read. A lot of them didn't know how to defend themselves. Mm -hmm. So a lot of them didn't know how to do anything for themselves. As a result of that, they don't know how to stand up for themselves. These women are... They don't even know how to stand against a man that's disrespecting them for themselves. You think they're going to be able to stand for you? They don't know how to stand for you. But how do us now, that it happened to us now as the second generation, how do we cope with that? For me, the way, 
I, I thank God again for the men that he has placed in my life. The man that's been in my life for the past 14 years, he's a man. He is what you would call a man. He is by my side. Um, I don't have that much. My, I go to depressions with other stuff, you know, issues that I have, but he does not allow me to fall deep into depressions. So I don't go through that anymore. But I think he is probably the person that gave me the wing because when I told him I'm going to do a live, whatever, I want to start writing my book and stuff, he's always supportive of that. But for me, I think coping with that for me is to make sure that my daughters don't go through that. Okay. It's to make sure that I can be a voice to let people know that it's okay to speak about what you've been through. Especially, especially the Black women, the Caribbean women, we need to stop putting a turning a blind eye and i will go on record and let anybody know you touch my daughters you dead you dead one way or another you're gonna be dead i don't care how because i will not watch my daughter spend her life with what i went through at the age that i am today i can still relieve the moment that mother preacher the moment that adult on top of that that grown-ass man was taking advantage of me i can still relieve the moment of that man putting me around his waistline as a little girl abusing me not knowing that's what he was doing i cannot watch you alive i'm sorry you abuse my daughter you dead yep that's all to it and i was watching something the other day on was it facebook and this little girl, she was raped. And I think she stabbed the guy and he ended up, he, he's dead. And she went and she told him what happened. And you know, for me, I felt the system sometimes failing. They arrested her. Why would, I know that she, she stabbed someone, but at the end of the day, that person was taking advantage of her. Women, I'm, I'm telling you straight up, Ash. Somebody raped my daughter. If I can't do it the legal way in America, because I don't want to go to prison, I mean, I'll do it in clean insanity. I wasn't saying, okay, the white people get away, to get away with it. Why not us get away with it? But I would, oh, I'll go to Haiti. I'm sorry. I, I'm I'm so sorry. Does Christian go to sanctify thou? You want to be a Christian? You want to call? Okay, we're going to pray. I'm sorry. Watching my daughter go to pain, I'm not going to sit and pray. I'm going to go find out what my ancestors did. That's exactly what I think I'm doing. That's the pain that, trust me, we are strong. We, we, are strong enough to handle our pain now that the fact that we have kids now <laughs> my kids. You, think I'm you think i'm i'm laughing i my am not laughing not... i'm not hold on ashley laura you know i love you baby you know how i am you know i always speak my mind you know me since we was in middle school laura i promise you i will go find out like i tell people in front of my kids, I'm not afraid of no snake. I will walk on them if I need to. If it comes somebody rape and touch my daughters and I need to walk on a snake head to get my justice, I will, snake and I, we just became best friends. I will not watch my daughter go, my daughters go through that and thinking, oh, you gonna smile on your mugshot. Yes, baby. I don't want a mugshot though. I felt the way that Leblanc, Shashi, Komo, Muhil, Bami, Mgaiwen, how you died. <laughs> Maybe that's it. We <laughs> oh, because I need to be the supporting system for my daughters. You understand? Mm -hmm. See, if I kill them and I go to prison, I, I mean, I, I mean, I'll try to claim insanity, you know. Period. But Simbaka claim insanity, then I don't want to my daughter to get to go through this, and then I kill the mother preacher. Then now I'm locked up. Even worse, now my daughter has to deal with the depression of her getting abused. Her mother's being no mbralaiti. Sherry, c'est ça, ça le maman do. I will learn my way, learn my ways. I'm serious. I think that we need to stop think making them think it's okay they could get away with it. Mm -hmm. And the ones in Haiti, ça qu'a dit yo, nous nous supposé comment c'est comme pour petite nous. Pas quitter si nous même nous yo t'as abusé nous, your daughter should not be repeated. Nous pas t'as supposé quitter petite nous. Be on 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 on. On, on sait qu'au côté que yo viole, yo viole petit tout. Non, 
Aïti da ya suti ya yo, you get away with justice, with murder. There's no justice system in Haiti, so. You could get away with murder, Petit. Tu tu ya tente yo? I remember, um, I have a, um, a guy friend when I was in school in Georgia, they're from the Virgin Island. This man said he will not do nothing in America. He could get a gun and shot you in the Virgin Island. He'll be a way to get, get away with murder. He'll be able to get away with it because nobody's going to really, uh, um, he's not, he don't have a good, um, uh, um, justice system there. Moi même qu'on y a là pour mon faire petit moins ça, n'a pas dit nos adventistes, pancotistes, tout tissio, all that could go to hell for all I care. <laughs> all that could go to hell for all I care right now. Right now I'm thinking about my daughter that is going to be hurting, that's going to be 40 year old, 50 year old, still dealing with somebody that done unveil them and take advantage of them. I want to make sure that they know that this mother preacher is not here to do it to somebody else. I think what you're doing with the lives is is great, and I think I don't know. Maybe you'll expand some more, invite like other people, just because a lot of people don't want to speak. And I think you bringing the live will bring them out to you know to express themselves, to vent, to speak their truth, and because you never know, a lot of people is hiding. You know when you, when they say must you in the closet la? There's a lot of people in the closet afraid to come out. Yeah, there is. Because of what society would say. Mm -hmm. Because of what people would think of them. All my life, I, I was like, I don't want my parents to know because if they know, they're going to make fun of me. Jesus, a I of, get... A lot of us don't want people to know that we were raped because <clears throat> we're afraid of what a man might judge and think that, oh, you know, she's easy. They're not going to do that. They're not going to, to do that. So a lot of um people does. um A lot of people... Like you, you're afraid to meet a guy and let him know that you were raped because you think he's gonna think something about you. Um, thank you, Lolo. Thank you, and Rosa. Thank you, my love. Thank you. Um, you know, honestly, I think this is gonna help lift a lot of weight on my shoulder of what I went through. Mm -hmm. I plan on, um, you know, telling my story. And if this is where I'm gonna start it to tell my story, then I'm gonna start it like that. Um, Rosa, we all been through something. Maybe it, it may not be. Um, through sexual abuse, it could have been through physical abuse, sometimes by the hand of your parents, sometimes by the hand of a mate, sometimes by the hand of a family member. So next week's topic is going to be about, I do have my notebook, um, next week is going to be about child abuse. Um, your self-esteem, how it affects your self-esteem, how does it affect your current life today? Because again, I think everything that we've been through as a child affect us here today, one way or another. So that's definitely the goal here. Um, if this is where I start with my story, then this is where we're going to start. And I know my story is many other people's story. You know how Lauren Hill said, strung in my pain with his fingers, telling my life with his words. So with that said, a lot of us are telling each other stories. We just don't know it. So. Mm -hmm. um, <laughs> Laura, <laughs> why you say girl, Lola? Um, oh, hey babe, thank you. Well, thank you for having me. Thank you so much, Ashley, for joining me yes, and telling your story. You. Um, definitely, definitely. I, I mean, we we we're gonna keep um sharing. Um, I have not yet put mine out. Hey, you know what, baby girl? Listen, you never know through this platform. Maybe I might be telling yours through your words, telling uh, telling your story through my words, and that and believe it or not, there's a lot of people in here that I might be I'm telling their story through my story, but they may not basically have the voice to do that. So next week, I want us to um come back here at 6 p.m. That the goal is trying to do it every Sunday at six. For those that knows me, if you want to join in, um. I don't mind if you know what I've been through and you want to come and say, hey, watch you, what you have watched me gone through. I don't mind. I'm okay with that. Because sometimes you telling a story may not help you, somebody else knowing you've been through it, telling your story for you, saying, hey, you know what? I've watched her done that. I've watched her been through that. Might actually help people understand a little bit better because some of my story.
I'd rather somebody else tell it because sometimes when I tell it, it doesn't, I don't, it don't sit right with me. But I am going to put my big girl panties on. Next week, we are going to talk about child abuse. We are going to, there's all type of child abuse. And next week, that's what we are going to do. So, um, Ashley, I thank you so much for joining me and telling no your problem. story. There are many other women and men also that has been abused that has a story to tell i hope that and i welcome every one of you guys to use my platform to use the time um and let's do this together let's take this journey together let's take a page out of each other's stories out of each other's life take our life back yeah and it's time for you to make sure that you get your life in order to make sure that you protect the little ones that you had or maybe there's something you're doing right now like Sometimes we don't realize we're abusing our kids one way or another through verbal. Um, I mean, when I get mad, I go off. When I go mad, I'm like, you know, I do. But I have to catch myself too. So I'm like, okay, I shouldn't let myself get that angry sometimes. But you know what I can say? All that comes from how you were raised as a child. Your mm -hmm. pain sometimes came throughout the way it comes out, it comes out wrong. And I want to start healing. And I want the world to know that the rose you see today is not. I'm trying to grow, trying to do something with my life so I can give my kids a better future. But they don't know where I've been through. They don't know where I've been. They don't understand who Rose is. And this little girl right here, this lady here today, if it wasn't for my God, if it wasn't because I had a strong God that was with me, that was that was making the way for me, I would not be here today. I believe it. I my God, because for the simple fact that I don't know the God that's being given out there, I want, I'm doing my own research. You see, I'm so happy that Vladimir put and finally put it out there, let everybody know that Jesus is black. So my God is the one that I know that's been with me. Yes, Lolo, you know that. You know that. And, you know, Laura's been my friend since we were in high school. That used to be my hairstylist when I was in high school. And if I'm ever going to a salon, it's still Laura's. If, you know, my daughter-in-law does my hair. You know that, Lolo. But <laughs> if I'm ever going to one, speaking of, hi, Lolo, on Facebook. She's not on TikTok, but she's on Facebook, Laura. <laughs> so I say this because... Hey, 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 hey. I've been through it, guys. I want you guys to go with me on that journey, what I've been through. I want you guys to understand that the rose that you guys see hustling the street is not just a happy, you know, I have my days. I have nights where I've laid in my bed and, and cried. I've been through it. And right now, I don't want to hide behind the shadow of what I've been through. I want to go ahead and bring it to the forefront and I want the world to take a page out of it. I want young kids that are coming up today that things they got it hard to understand you could not have, I'm, there's other people that's probably had it harder than me, but I'm gonna say I've had it hard. For you to see that whenever you want to do something, you gotta keep going for it. You cannot just give up. You can be somebody, you can do better, but you have to let those demons out. You have to not let them win. So I'm going to tell everybody thank you that came on here, whether you stayed, whether you passed through, if you commented, if you shared a story, you, you know, I'm sure a lot of you guys are probably just following. Eventually you guys will join me on this platform and tell your story. And I want to open the door for you guys and give it to you. So we have the topics we have coming up. We have child abuse coming up. We have problem mystique coming up. Problem mystics are not caused by you, but caused by your parents, by the generations before you. That's affecting your life today. Sometimes the reason why you can't be with a man, the reason why you can't be with a woman, the reason why you cannot have a child, the reason why you have these things going on in your life, but you don't understand them. We're going to talk about these bondages that our great-grandparents 
the curse that's been that was cast on them that caused us to be cursed we don't understand where they're coming from bagay ou pa te pa on te fè grand nou te fè grand grand nou te fè jodi a se ou ka paye pou yo nou gen sa this which is going to be one of our topics we have blended family coming up blended family Come up, let nous gain petit, et puis nous marier avec un monde nous gain petit tout. Comment pour nous gérer relation ça yo? Nous gain ça qui va come up. Um, nous gain physical abuse is gonna come up. Physical abuse might come. There's child abuse and there's physical abuse. Physical abuse, or uh, um, this one I'm talking relationship wise. I'm not, you know, child abuse is done by your by your parents, by the people that were supposed to raise you. To be able to know your value, pour comprendre nous, nous gagnons. Um, the physical abuse is gonna come from relation, physical, verbal. All those are gonna be all in one, and that's gonna come based on relationship purposes. We also gonna talk about, <coughs> excuse me, how to love yourself. How to love yourself, ladies, men, learn how to love yourselves. And what, what's the foundation that you cannot learn to love yourself? And I think if we learn to love ourselves, I think we'll learn to be better human beings. We'll learn to be in better relationships. We'll learn to be better mates. We'll learn to be better parents. But if you don't love you, if you don't value you, you cannot value somebody else. What to take from somebody, what not to take from, you know what? I think with financial abuse and the, you know, I actually did not list it like that. Um, the signs of loving yourself, I had that under somebody using you, but I'm going to list it better as financial abuse because financial abuse comes under you not loving yourself because I feel like if you love yourself, you're not going to, so if you love yourself, you will learn to value you and you will learn not to let somebody use you for what you can do for them but see what is it that they themselves can do for you as a couple and i think financial abuse is going to be part of the relationship because in and and that's the reason why i talk i moment as um loving yourself is because we women is because we don't know how to love ourselves that's why we let men do a lot of things to us that's why i think ou d'accord pour prendre nèg pour occuper nèg lan même les nèg la montre qui ça li elle pas bon important li pas respecto la vie avec femme à droite à gauche la dou n'importe sac sorti l'en bouche li you take it because you don't know how to love yourself the minute you learn how to love yourself and be able to vivre peut-être where your life does not surround or revolve around that person you want take that they won't even be able to abuse you for a dollar your pap capable because chaque dollar dépensé ou l'a dépensé là on purpose chaque dollar que lui même lui dépenser sous l'a dépense you are going to grow together learn to understand when somebody's coming into your life to use you stop thinking you can change a man to what you want. As a woman, we are nurtured. We were born to be nurturing of a man. Nurture, I'm sorry, to be nurtured. But if you don't learn to love yourself, and think you're always gonna take a man and think that you can make that man love you the way you, if you do everything, if you become his slave, you give him everything he wants. That's a damn lie, guys, we know that. But we're not gonna take that topic today. I want to say thank you, thank you, thank you a million for everybody that joined today. Because of you guys, you guys, we went in about almost three hours today because of you guys. Yes, we're going to take our power back. We are going to, we are going to grow with each other. We are going to learn what not to take from a man, what to take, what it should be okay in a relationship. And there's a lot of women there that are suffering right now in a relationship they're not happy with, but they stay because they don't know how to love themselves. Because they feel like their life validate because of that man. It doesn't matter, you're not ugly. It don't matter how, how you shape. 
Okay. Sometime I remember, I, I remember thinking I was the most ugliest woman because my self-esteem was shattered to that level. I didn't think I was worthy to be loved. But when it's yours, it's yours. What's for you is for you. When the man in your life that comes is going to love you, he's going to love you with all your flaws. He's going to black metal. He's going to put you on a pedestal and he's going to value you. And anybody that never knew how you're worth will not be looking at him like them. They're going to be envy of him because he has put value on your name. Like James Charles normally say, c'est valet qui con valeur valeur. Learn to love yourself. Then you will not take crap from some men. Learn to love yourself. If you have to be by yourself with your kids, quit saying I can't do it because you need him. He's abusing you. He's mistreating you. But you're using the kids as a way to hold on to him. He's not thinking of you when he's doing those things. He's not thinking of the kids. Those kids are probably going to be more miserable simply because you're not giving your, the opportunity for you to be happy to make them happy. When you're miserable, you make those kids miserable. Misery love company. So guys, I'm going to sign off today and I'm going to say this. Sexual abuse is never okay. If you know somebody that's on your entourage or your surrounding that's being abused, if you know that they want to report it, but they're afraid of what might be said, you guys can call it in as a hint and have them start looking into investigating it anonymously. We need to stop that. We need to really stop that. So I want to say thank you for your time. I will see you guys next week. Thank you. Love you guys. I got to go deal with my babies. Good night, Rose. Good night, Lolo. Good night, Ashley. Good night, everybody. Hi, Mona. Thank you for being there. Hi, B. Hi, babe. Bye, babe. Good night, guys. Thank you for your time.